I am Tom Hallam, your videographer, and I represent Atkinson Baker Incorporated of Glendale, California. I am not financially interested in this action, nor am I a relative or employee of any attorney or any of the parties. The date is July 21st, 2009. The time is 9.02 a.m. This deposition is taking place at the law offices of Huckabee, Munson, Rollett, and Moore, 400 West Capitol Avenue, Suite 1900, Little Rock, Arkansas. This is case number 409CV0008BSM, entitled Terry Hobbs versus Natalie Pazdar individually and Natalie Pazdar, Emily Robinson, and Martha Seidel doing business as Dixie Chicks. The deponent is Terry Hobbs. This deposition is being taken on behalf of the defendant. Your court reporter is Kelly Hill. Counsel will now introduce themselves and the witness will be sworn in. Uh, Dan Davison and DeLeslie Davis with the law firm of Fulbright and Jaworski representing Ms. Pazdar. John Moore and Melissa Bandy representing Ms. Pazdar. Bob Willenberger, uh, Thompson Co. Cousins and Irons representing the Dixie Chicks. Cody Highland and Ted Thomas representing Plaintiff Terry Hobbs. You'll raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Could you state your name for the record, sir? Terry Wayne Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs, you can put your hand down now. Um, Mr. Hobbs, my name is Dan Davison, and I represent. Natalie Pazdar in connection with the lawsuit that you have brought against her. Um, and you understand that you're here today to answer questions? I, I do. And you understand that, that you took an oath to, to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, correct? I do. Right. And you understand, I assume, that the testimony you give here today has the same force and effect as though you were testifying in front of a judge and a jury? I do. All right. A couple of uh, ground rules, Mr. Hobbs, if we could, before we kind of get started. It'll, I think it will make the day go a little faster. I will uh, endeavor to uh, ask questions that hopefully you understand. Uh, but if I ask a question that you don't understand, if you would tell me that you don't understand it, I'll, I'll try to rephrase it. Is that fair? That sounds fair. And if you, if you tell me that you don't understand it, I'm going to assume that you do understand the question. Is that a fair assumption, sir? It is. All right. I will also... Um, try to give you the courtesy of letting you finish your answer before I start my next question. If you would uh, allow me to uh, allow me the same courtesy of letting me finish my question before you start your answer. Does that make sense? It does. Because the court reporter has a hard time taking down if both of us talk at the same time. And she also has a very difficult time taking down shakes of the heads or uh-huhs or uh-uhs. So if you could answer out loud verbally, that would be helpful. Is that, is that agreeable, sir? I agree. All right. Now, in Texas, you know, I, 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 I certainly don't, typically don't have a problem being heard, and I will try to speak up. I, I do know, sir, that, that you uh, have a tendency to, to be soft-spoken at times. So even though we're on videotape, if you would try to answer out loud uh, uh, as, as, as forcefully as you can, I think that'll, that'll help both the, the videographer, it'll help Mr. Wellenberger, who's on the phone, it'll help the court reporter. Is that fair? Sounds fair. All right. Mr. Hobbs? Could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury why you sued my client? For her statements against me that she made on the internet. Okay. Anything else? And her actions in the, on the uh, here in Little Rock. That's at the rally. Yes, sir. All right. Any any other any other reasons that you sued my client? I object to the extent that that calls for a legal conclusion because it requires him to fight apply facts to the law. I'm just asking you, sir, for the, the reasons why you filed a lawsuit against my client. You said the, the, uh, the letter on the internet and the rally. Anything else? Continued objection. Oh, you're going and answer. Okay. Uh, probably, or not probably, for the All the emotions, the stress, the anger. That her statements caused you? Correct. Well, they certainly weren't things that you had never heard before, is it? Is it? 
No. I mean, in fact, there are things that have been said for years and years about you, isn't it? Some people say. Well, I mean, you said, you've said in, in press releases and, and in the newspaper that these are things that have been said time and time again against you for years and years. Isn't that right? It is. As a matter of fact, you said you've previously testified, not testified, you've been quoted in the newspapers as saying that, that the, the press was out to get you for years, correct? I had to say that quote. Well, that's something that you've thought, isn't it, that the press has been out to get you for years and years? I had to, no, I don't think I thought that. Well, you filed a grievance against Mr. Reardon, didn't you? I did. And who's Mr. Reardon? He's the defense attorney for Damian Nichols. All right. And when did you file that grievance against him? I'm not sure of the date, but probably 07, 08. All right. And the reason for that is because you think he's out to get you? No, I think their actions were out to get me. Okay. Well, you say, isn't it true, Mr. Hobbs, that from basically the, the time of the murder and the conviction, the murders and the trial and the conviction and all the appeals that have gone forward since that time, um, you've, been at the, you've at least been at the center of this controversy about who killed the boys and, and were the boys wrongfully convicted? Objection. No. Calls for a legal conclusion. No, you haven't. You had that hadn't been a controversy. No. Why do you say that? Why you, do you say that? Well, I get to ask the questions here, sir. Because so, it's not a true statement. Okay. So there's never there, there hasn't been an ongoing controversy about whether or not the West Memphis Three killed the three boys. Objection. Calls for a legal conclusion. Do, do we need to make make the regular stipulations regarding uh, reservation of objections, except as to form of question? I don't know if you all have a standard stipulation just, that you do in Texas. Just take them by the rules. That's fine. Okay. Hadn't there been a controversy since the conviction as to whether or not the boy, the West Memphis Three were wrongfully convicted? In some people's mind. Okay. And, well, there's been national press on the subject, hasn't there? There has. And there have been um, several books written on the subject, haven't there? A few. There have been shows on CNN about it, right? There have. There have been shows on Geraldo about it. There have. There have been shows on America's Most Wanted about it. There have. In fact, you've been in all those shows, haven't you? A part of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a yes, correct? It is a yes. And that's been since the time of the convictions going forward to today, right? That controversy. Objection to the extent that it calls for a legal conclusion. You get to still answer. He, he has to just make objections to preserve them. But Will unless you repeat you tell us the enough, question? Could you read the question back, ma'am? I know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That, and that's been since the time of the conviction, uh, convictions going forward to today. And then that's an objective. Right? I didn't understand that question. Right. Well, the, the controversy of whether or not the, the West Memphis Three actually killed the three little boys and whether or not they were wrongfully convicted, that's been a controversy from shortly after the verdict was returned until we sit here today, right? Correct. Continuing it suggestion is. that it calls for a legal conclusion, Mr. Hobbs is not required to define what a public controversy Ted, is or what a controversy is. Ted, we're going to take the deposition by the rules, which means you get to say objection four period. Mm -hmm. And then if I think that I need a, any education about what the objection is, then I'll ask you. But we're not going to sit here for the rest of the day and have you coach the witness. So I'd ask that you follow the rules and basically say objection form or instruct the witness not to answer, which is all the rules allow I'm you to I'm permitted do. to state the basis for the objection. And what I don't want you to do is come in and ask 50 questions and because I object to 49 of them and not 50 and try to say that I waive the objection with respect to the 50th question. And you can object as to so form as to all 50 questions. Continuing, well then it's going to be like that. So a continuing objection. objection to the notion that Mr. Hobbs is required to define what is or isn't a public controversy because that's a legal concept and we're here to take a factual deposition. Yes, we are. Isn't it true, Mr. Hobbs? You, you wrote a journal, did you not, Mr. Hobbs, short from May the 5th, 1993 forward? I have done a lot of writing. Well, you, you produced a four-volume journal to us, correct? 
correct. And in that journal, don't you state that uh, the press is out to get you? No. You don't say that? No. Do you, do you think folks are out to get you? No. Mr. Hobbs, how would you describe yourself to the jury as we sit here today? As being a pretty good man. Okay. Well, tell me about yourself. Huh? I am, uh, I'm presently divorced from a marriage that has been interrupted by the death of our child. Okay. And that's from Pam Hobbs? Correct. What you, as you sit here today, what do you think your reputation in the community is? How the people that know me like me. Okay. Well, but generally, what, what, if you had to describe your reputation to folks other than just a good man, what, would, what else would it be? Uh, a hard-working man, good dad, good husband in the past, uh, pretty good man. You an honest fella? I try my best. Law-abiding man? I do pretty good at it. And that's your reputation today? Well, that's, some people might not think so. Well, what people don't think so? Who knows? As we see today, do you know of anybody that thinks otherwise of you? Yeah, there's people that has asked me questions about all this stuff. That shouldn't have never been. And that's been going on for a long time, hasn't it? For about the past couple years. Okay. When do you first recall being asked those sorts of questions? What kind of questions? Well, the questions you just said that have been going on for the last couple of years. People has come up and asked me, did you kill some babies? Who asked you that? Friends. People don't even know me. I don't even know them. Well, you were asked that question on CNN, right? Sure. And when, when were you on CNN? Roughly so, 07, 08. Okay, that was before, was that before or after the DNA results? Was after. Before, was it after? I'm guessing after. Well, I want you to guess. I mean, that's one of the things that I, and I, I know Ted. I keep up with the dates. I know Ted doesn't want you to guess. I'm not if, keeping up with the dates. Okay. So the first time you were ever asked if you were, if you had killed the three boys, it's your testimony was after the DNA results? Probably. Okay. When were you on Geraldo? 94, I think. When were you on Cooper? 360. 08, 07. Before or after the DNA? After. Okay. And Larry King? I didn't do Larry King. Was it, was it, a, was it, was it your daughter that did Larry King? It was. And when did she do Larry King? 07, 08. Okay. Did you ask her to go on Larry King? I advised her not to. Why did you advise her not to? Because I don't want my children drug into this. Okay. What do you hope to get out of the lawsuit? Justice. How do you define justice? In a court of law. You want money, don't you? I don't want. I want justice as the courts deem. Well, you're going to ask the court to award you money, right? I ain't asking for nothing. So you're not going to ask the court to award you money? Justice. That's not my question. You're going to sit and you're going to get on the witness stand and you're going to ask the court to award you money? I don't know. I'm not asking for money. You're not asking for money. Well, then what do you want? How do you define justice? Whatever the court deems necessary. An apology? Is that, is that enough? Whatever the courts decide. No, I'm not asking. What, I'm asking what you want to get out of this lawsuit, Mr. Hobbs. If I was sit here to be honest, then that's what I want. I want you to be. I would totally sit honest. here and say I'd like to see the Dixie Chicks humiliated. I like they have caused me. Okay. I think that's a little bit fair. Okay. So you want to humiliate the Dixie Chicks, and how would you do that? Letting the courts decide. Okay. Why'd you? Why'd you? Why do you focused on the Dixie Chicks? They're not the only people. Matter of fact, they're not the first people that made these allegations. Why are you focused on the Dixie Chicks? Object to the extent that it requires, calls for a legal conclusion. Not a legal conclusion. Answer the question, sir. Why am I focused on the Dixie Chicks? Because they speak the loudest. Louder than Larry King? I didn't do Larry King. Louder than Geraldo? 
Geraldo never accused me. Louder than CNN? They had questions. When did you first meet Mr. Hilland? Mr. Highland? Highland. I'm sorry. I apologize, Cody. Uh, a year ago, maybe. How'd you meet him? I was on a mission. What was your mission, Mr. To find some attorneys to look at my complaint and see if I had something worth fighting for. Okay. How many lawyers did you have to go to? I talked to several. How many? I don't keep up with it. More than, more than one? More than one. More than two? More than two. More than ten? More, roughly, probably. More than fifteen? Probably not. All right. So you, more than ten lawyers. And was was Mr. Was Cody the only one that would take your case? No, I've had a few of them that said they'd like to do this. Okay. Who? I don't know their names. I don't keep up with them. You keep any records of who you? Who I you do, but to? I don't have them on me. Well, as you sit here today, can you recall any of the other ten lawyers that you went to talk to? Uh, uh, Chris Carnahan. Where's I talked Chris? to him. Where's Chris? He's here in Little Rock somewhere, I believe. Okay. He's in Arkansas. Who else? There was some more in Arkansas, but I don't know their name. There was a... I don't recall their names. Okay. Any in Tennessee? Sure. How many did you talk to in Tennessee? I don't know the number. Would that be in addition to the, the 10 that you talked to here? No, it'd probably be in the equation. It, meaning they, they would be part of the 10? Correct. Okay. When did you retain Cody to represent you in this case? Roughly a year ago. You have a written fee agreement with him? We do. What? What's that agreement? Uh, it's Objection, hard. privilege. Instructing him not to answer? Yes. It's, it, it's a contingent. You have this on a, your attorney has this on a contingent fee basis, correct? That's our business. Your attorney has it on a contingency fee basis, correct? Correct. All right. It means. Uh, he gets paid if you get paid, right? That's part of it. All right. Who's paying expenses? Well, we've covered our own. So you, you're, you're paying all the expenses? I've paid, my, I've paid some. Who else has paid some? Mr. Cody has paid some. Anybody else paid some? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. How did you find Cody? Did someone recommend him to you? Someone did. Who recommended him to you? Mr. Chris. Who's Mr. Mr. Chris is the lawyer here in town? Mm-hmm. If to answer out loud. Yes, sir. All right. And when did you meet Mr. Thomas? I don't know, a long time ago, over the phone. Well, how long? How long? Give me a time frame. Ten years, 15 years, 12 years. What was the context in which you met Mr. Thomas? Just talking to him. Was it in conjunction with uh, West Memphis Three? Seemed like it was. What was the What was the circumstances in which you met Mr. Thomas 10, 15 years ago? I didn't like the way some of the procedures happened the night of May the fifth, and I talked to Mr. Ted about this. What procedures didn't you like? The on police the procedures. Objection to the extent that it calls for privileged communication. I'm not asking what he talked to you about. I'm asking what procedures he didn't like. What police procedures didn't you not like the night of May the 5th? We were so desperately trying to get them to help us search for our kids, and they would not. Is Mr. Thomas a criminal lawyer, do you know? I'm not aware of that. Did you call him the night of the 5th? No, May the I 5th? did not. When did you call him? 
how long after May the 5th, 1993, did you first talk to Mr. Thomas? I'm not sure. Well, I mean, was it hours, days, weeks, months? Give me some sense, sir. Months or years. Months or years. Do you know if it was 93? Don't know that. Do you know if it was before or after the conviction? Don't know that. When was the first time you spoke with an attorney about the events that occurred on May the 5th, 1993? Mm -hmm. Not sure. Did you speak with an attorney in 93 about that event? Uh, yes, I believe we did. Who did you speak with? I'm not asking what you spoke about. I'm just asking who you spoke who you spoke Seemed with. It seemed like it was Wayne Emmons. Who's Mr. Emmons? He's an attorney. Is Mr. Emmons a criminal attorney? He is. Why did you speak with a criminal attorney in 93 about the events, about the murder of the three little boys? Not knowing uh, who to talk to. We just talked, called someone up out of the phone book and talked to him. Okay. Did, was, he, was he your, did you establish an attorney-client relationship with him? No, I did not. Okay. What did you speak with, with him about? The night of the procedures of the night of the May the 5th. What about the procedures the night of May the 5th? The police was privileged regardless of whether he knows or doesn't know whether they established a relationship. Well, if he talks to a lawyer and it has anything to do with any conceivable representation, it's privileged and instructed not to answer. I disagree. He's testified, Ted, that there was no attorney-client relationship established. He's not a lawyer that can, that can, that's qualified to make that concession. Did you pay him any money? No. Did you sign any, was there any sort of uh, no. retainer agreement signed, anything right in between you two? No, sir. You just picked up the phone and called him and asked him some questions? And went down and talked to him. Okay. Tell me what you talked about. Don't okay. remember. Objection. That's privileged. Did he give you any advice? Objection. That's privileged. No, not whether or not he gave, just whether, yes or no, whether or not he gave him any advice. That's not privileged. Did he give that's you correct. any advice? Don't remember. And any other questions about that you're refusing to answer based upon the advice of Mr. Thomas, correct? No, because no. There's, I don't remember everything in, that's happened in the past. Okay. So you don't remember other, you just remember you talked to a criminal attorney in 93, but you don't remember what you talked about. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And it was, and it was about the events of, of the evening of May the 3rd, correct? May the 5th, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. What did you do to prepare for the deposition today, sir? Anything? Read some papers. What did you read? Just some papers. What papers? I don't know what they are. A bunch of garbage. You have no idea what papers you read? Yeah, some statements. What statements? From Sharon Nelson. What, sta what, what statements from Sharon Nelson? A bunch of garbage. Well, what, what did Miss Nelson say in those statements that you think is a bunch of garbage? How that she th believes that I told her I found the boy's body before the police. When did, you, when did she make those statements, Mr. I don't know who she made them to. It, I asked, it's on I asked, paper. I, I asked when she made those statements. I don't know. Do you know who she made those statements to? Sure don't. Do you know when she made those statements? No, sir. You hadn't sued her, have you? No, sir. Okay. Why not? Objection to the extent that it calls for a legal conclusion. I'm not asking for a legal conclusion. I'm asking you why you haven't You're sued. You're asking for a legal strategy. You're asking for why he did stuff. You're asking for the manner in which he chose to exercise his rights under the law, and that relates to legal strategy. You can answer the question, Mr. Hall. And the question was? Why hadn't you sued her? She said you found the bodies for the police. That would be a pretty damning thing. That, if it was true, wouldn't well, it? Well, there's been a lot of people say garbage like that. Well, my question and I hope I get to address them all. Well, this is your chance. Why hadn't you sued her? Well, maybe she's on the list. You got a list of folks you're going to sue? Couldn't tell you. Maybe in my mind. Okay. Well, if you were going to sue folks, who would you sue? 
Everyone Object to the extent that it calls for legal conclusion. Everyone that brought my name up. Everybody. I think deserves something. You want to humiliate all of them? I'm a victim of this. That's not my question. You want to humiliate, humiliate everyone who's brought your name up, isn't that right? I like to see the courts address every one of them. Well, you said you want to humiliate the Dixie Chicks. Do you want to humiliate everyone who brought your name up? In that sounds order? fine to me. Sounds fine to you. All right. What other papers did you did you look at in preparation for the deposition? Some other pile of garbage. Well. That's what I think of them. Well, I appreciate that, but I need to know what pile of garbage you looked at, Mr. Hobbs. I don't know. Can't remember a single other piece of paper. I don't know what they call it. It's a pile of papers. Well, explain to me how, how, tall, how tall a pile of papers did you look at? Use your hand from the table. A oh, half inch. Half inch. Okay. Or less. Or less. Okay. And do you recall how many, different, how many different documents were in that half inch of paper? No. After I started reading them, oh yeah, I'm sorry, the police interview. Uh, of you in 07? Uh, roughly, if that's when it happened. All right. Well, and that was before, that police interview, that was before um, November of, of 07 when Mrs. Ms. Maines posted her letter and appeared at the rally that you're suing on, right? Sounds good. Well, that's when it, I mean, not sounds good, that's when it was, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't keep up with the dates. You don't keep up with the dates. Well, if I told you that you were interviewed, uh, that your police interview was several months prior to Miss Maines posting her letter or appearing at the Little Rock rally, would that sound about right to you? Objection calls for speculation. He said he didn't know. Not I still that. don't know. Still don't know? You know that your interview is available on the Internet, isn't it? It is. In fact, the, the video is available on the internet. You can get on YouTube and look at it, can't you? You sure can. And how long has that been available on the internet? Couldn't tell you. Why did the police want to talk to you? I asked the police. Okay. Okay. Other than looking at this half inch of paper that you can't recall, what else did you do to prepare for your deposition, Mr. Hobbs? Just tried to sleep on it. Try to get a good night's sleep? I tried. Okay. Didn't happen. Right. I appreciate that. What else did you do? Anything? Prayed about it. Prayed about it. Anything else? No. Okay. You met with your lawyers? I did. When did you meet with them? Last night. And who was present? Mr. Ted and Mr. Cody. Okay. Anyone else present? No, sir. And how long did you meet with your lawyers preparing for today? 30, 40 minutes. Okay. Is that the only time you've met with them preparing for today? I would say, yeah. Okay. And have you talked to anybody other than your lawyers about the fact that you're being deposed today? Maybe I might have told some people at work that I'm coming up here for a deposition. Okay. Can you tell them about what or just no. a deposition? Oh, well, they know. They, they know? They have followed this story the all the way through. Well, who would you have told at work? Who? I work with a bunch of men. Okay. Have you spoken with anybody over the phone about your, the deposition or preparing for the deposition? I'm not sure. Have you spoken, did you speak, other than just getting with your lawyers about the date and the logistics, the date, the where, the when, have you spoken with your lawyers on the phone preparing for the deposition? No. I don't believe so. Okay. Any reason you can't give truthful testimony here today, Mr. Hobbs? Well, if I don't remember something, it's that that happens. Well, and if you but can't, I am trying my best to be just as honest as I'm sitting here. I appreciate that. And and I don't want you to guess, and, and Ted and Cody don't want you to guess. If you can't remember something or you don't know, just tell me that you don't know. Right. But I don't. But if you do know, I'm entitled to, I think, a, a, the best answer, the answer to the best of your knowledge. Exactly. But there's no reason why you can't give truthful testimony here today. Correct. You're not on any sort of medication that would impact your, your ability to focus or concentrate or give truthful answers. I am not. And you hadn't done any drugs. 
I don't do drugs. Well, you've done drugs in the past, haven't you? I don't do drugs. That's not my question. You've done drugs in the past, haven't you? I'm not a druggie. Mr. Mr. Hobbs, did you not understand my question? I heard your question. And my question was very simple. Have you done drugs in the past? I've tried medications in the past. Medications? Well, what medications? Whatever the doc gives you. So the only, medi the only drugs that you've done in the past are drugs that doctors have prescribed? Is that your testimony, Mr. Hobbs? Well, I smoked a joint. Okay. Other than, uh, other than smoking a joint, any other drugs that you have used other than drugs that doctors have prescribed for you? I'm not in the business. That's not my question. My question is, I'm, actually, I'm not asking if you're in the business of being a drug dealer. My question is, is other than smoking a joint or two, as you call it, as you said, what other drugs have you done other than drugs that have uh, been prescribed by physicians? Young and dumb, you probably would try anything, and I haven't tried anything, but I'm, I've never been in the drug world. I'm not on drugs, never been on drugs. So it's your testimony that the only drugs that you have ever done are drugs that's been prescribed to you or a joint or two. Is that your testimony under oath, Mr. Hobbs? Well, and, and remember, I'm not you are under business. oath. I know that. Okay, so my question is, other than the drugs that a physician has subscribed I, I've tried to cocaine to, a few times, big deal. Tried cocaine a few times. All right, so we've got some joints, some cocaine. What other drugs? None. Crystal meth? I'm not in it. I'm sorry? I'm not in the business. That's not my question. My question, sir, is crystal meth. My question, sir, is under oath, can is it your testimony that you have never done crystal meth? I tried it with my wife. You tried it. Okay, so you have done crystal. Now we know you've done you've done joints, you've done crack, you've done cocaine, you've done crystal meth. I've never done crack. You never done crack? No, sir. What other drugs have you done? None. None. How many drug convictions do you have, Mr. Hobbs? None. None. You've never one. Well, is it none joint. or is it one? What it's is it? It's a joint. Half a joint. That the only time you've been arrested for drugs? Or wherever anything would do with drugs. That's the only time. One joint. Yes, sir. Half when, a joint. Half a joint. When were you arrested for half for half a joint? Oh four, oh five. I'm just guessing. I'm not sure of the date. Okay. And it's your testimony that that's the only time you've ever been arrested. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. No, it's not the only time I've been arrested. For arrest. we'll, get to, we'll get to all the other arrests rest and convictions. But the only time you've ever been arrested for drugs is that half a joint in 04 or 05. That's your testimony under oath? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have a list of... You, you said you've got a list of folks in your mind that you want to sue. Give me the list. Everybody who brought my name up about suspecting me as a suspect, okay. I feel like should be dealt with in the courts. Okay. Do you, other than just a general category, do you have a list of specific folks that you want to sue? Everyone who brought my name up. Uh, my, my question is, do you have specific individuals or, or entities in mind? Oh, I'd love to sue that defense team. Okay. And that would be Mr. Reardon and those folks? All his clowns. Okay, all his clowns. Who else? Everybody else that brought my name up. I'm asking for specific. Did you have any specific names, Mr. Hobbs? Nah, Mark Byers. You want to sue Mark? Why do you want to sue Mark Byers? For calling me a child killer. When did he do that? On TV. Ask him. When, my question is, when did he call you a child killer on TV? On Larry King. When did he do that? Whenever they done the Larry King live show. All right. Well, why hadn't you sued him? Well, he might be on the list. Well, okay. Well, my question is, if he came on TV and called you a child killer, and you, I'm assuming you didn't do it, did you do it? Did you kill those three little boys? I can't believe you. Well, sir, my question is, is you've sued my folks for, for a lot of bad things, and one of the things is just basically saying that, that 
the wrong, uh, the, the, they were wrongfully convicted, and the killer of the three little boys is still at large. And my question to you, sir, is did you kill those three little boys? No, sir. You know, a lot of people think you did. Come on, I don't care. Okay. That's why I'm here today. Were you involved in the murder of the three little boys? No, sir. One of them little boys was my stepson. I appreciate that, sir. Do you think the, the, the West Memphis Three, the three that have, were convicted in 94, do you think they did it? Sure do. No doubt in your mind? Correct. Has there ever been a doubt in your mind? No. You, you would agree with me, sir, that there is a doubt in a lot of other people's minds. I don't care about that. Okay. You don't want them to get a new trial, do you? Justice has taken its toll, and I appreciate the justice system. My question, sir, is you don't want the West Memphis Three to get a new trial, do you? They don't deserve one. I take it that you don't want them to get a new trial. Exactly. And the reason is? They killed three little boys. If there's a doubt that they killed it, do you, killed the three little boys, do you think they deserve a, fair, a new trial? There's never been a doubt proven. Not in your mind? Nor in the minds of the justice system. And you realize that those appeals are still underway? I don't care. But you understand that? I do. Okay. When was the last time you spoke with a criminal lawyer about the killing of the West Memphis, about the killing of the three little boys? A criminal lawyer? Yes, sir. Ross Sampson. When did you, and Mr. Sampson, he, he's a criminal lawyer you consulted with regard to the, the three killings, correct? He's more than a criminal lawyer. I appreciate that, but you consulted him a, a conjunction with Criminal issues? No. Okay. He's your he's a spokes he's your spokesman, right? To no. the public. He was at that time. What time are we talking about? Oh seven. Okay. So in oh seven. Roughly oh seven. Okay. Mr. S you you retained Mr. Sampson to be your spokesman? Mr. Sampson agreed to, to speak for me. Okay. And when you speak to you mean speak to the speak to the public? To the media, to the public. Okay. And is Mr. Sampson still your uh, public spokesperson today? No, he is not. At what, from what period of time was Mr. Sampson your uh, media spokesman? During 07. Okay. I'm thinking. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, when, when in 07 did you first contact Mr. Sampson about being your media spokesman? I'm not sure. Well, was it? Spring, winter, fall, summer? Fall, probably. Fall. I'm just guessing fall. Objection calls for speculation. I want you to guess. I just want you to give me the best answer that you can. I just did. Okay. Was it before or after? Did you retain Mr. Sampson to be your media spokesman before or after you were interviewed by the West Memphis Police in OSEC? Probably before, if I remember right. Okay. Guessing again, because I don't remember. Okay. How much did you did you have a written agreement with Mr. Sampson? Mr. Sampson didn't charge me a penny. It's not my question. No, I did not. Okay. Not on this issue. Not on the being a media spokesperson issue. Correct. Okay. But he was authorized to speak on your behalf. I give him the permission. Okay. Without getting into the specifics of what. Well, let me back up. Was he acting as your lawyer then or just a media spokesperson? A spokesman. Not a lawyer? Correct. He wasn't giving you any legal advice? Other than tell me not to talk to him. And that's why I told him, I, that's why I'm getting with you. I want you to tell him. So as the media spokes representative or consultant, Mr. Sampson advised you not to speak to the media, right? Probably. I don't remember. Well, did he? I mean, uh, you just... Ask him. Well, I'm, I'm asking you. I don't remember. You don't remember if, if Mr. Sampson told you to or... 
to or not to talk I told to the Mr. Press. Sampson I wasn't going to talk to the media, and I want you to do it for me. Okay. So he did. Okay. And he was authorized to do so on your behalf? Correct. And did you and he talk about what, uh, what he should tell the media? media? Yeah. What did you, you guys talk about that he should tell the media? Objection to extent that calls for privileged communication. He's already said it wasn't in a legal capacity. He, he's not free to waive that. It's his privilege to waive. He's the only one that can. I instruct him not to answer about any conversations he had with Mr. Sampson. Are you refusing to answer that question? I do. Okay. You said that's the only, that Mr. Sampson didn't charge you for, for that representation. I, I take it from your answer that he's charged you uh, in other context? Mm -hmm. You have to answer out loud, Mr. Chalks. Yes. All right. What, what other representation or how, when else did you hire Mr. Sampson in which he represented you and which you paid him money? Uh, well, he did a Hollywood film uh, contract with us. Is that the Dimension Force. Films one it, or is that a different one? It's Dimension Films. Okay. And he, he was your entertainment lawyer? I guess. That's what he's listed in the phone book as. Entertainment lawyer. So he's an entertainment lawyer and also a criminal lawyer? He is. Okay. And he represented you when you sold your life story to Dimension Films, right? He did. And that was your life story in conjunction with the murders that we refer to as the West Memphis Three, right? That's my life story. Well, they were, they were particularly interested in the, the the West Memphis Three and the murders. Okay. Right? I'm not sure. I just sold my life story. And you anticipated that they were going to make a movie out of that, right? We were led to believe that. Okay. And you were cool with that. Right? Well, they presented it in a way that you felt comfortable with it. And you were comfortable having your life story and your uh, involvement with the, the murders and the trial <laughs> made into a movie. And that's why you sold them the life story. Exactly wrong. Well, why? You just sat there and said, my involvement with the murders. That's a stupid question. Your involvement meaning your stepson, whatever your involvement was, whether it be your steps, you just, uh, how, you, how you found uh, that, that, he was, that, that he was missing, to the trial, to the hubbub afterwards. I didn't say that you were involved, Mr. Hobbs. But your involvement, whatever that is, as the stepson, as, as the parent. stepfather, as a parent, as a you parent. were comfortable with selling your story and having that story made into a movie that would have national uh, release. Were you not? I guess. Yes or no? Good guess. I'm sorry, not a good it's a yes or no? We did sign the contract. And you anticipated that a national a movie with a national release would be made? Correct. Okay. And you were okay with that? At the time we were. All right. And actually you sat down on two separate occasions and gave a detailed interview to Dimension Films, did you not? Uh, we talked to them, yes. And they asked on two separate occasions, at least two separate occasions. Seemed like it. All right. And you told them basically what happened that day, right? Some. We didn't go into detail like you think. Okay. Well, I've read it. You, I've, I've read the, I've read the mm -hmm. notes. Um, were you honest and truthful about Probably. what happened? Try to be. I mean, you didn't make stuff up. Correct. And what you told those folks actually happened, right? Well, I'm not sure what I told them. It's okay. been a while ago. You tried to be truthful at the time. I do. Okay. And the, the, the journals, the handwritten journals that you produced mm -hmm. in this case, you remember those? I do. Okay. Um, you started right, making those journals May the 5th? No, sir. When did you start making them? Sometime in the 90s, early 90s. In the early 90s? Mm-hmm. Before or after the murders? After. Okay. Do you recall how long after the murders? I don't. 
the, uh, and, and in the journals, you set out kind of what happened from your perspective, correct? As I seen it that night. And were you truthful and honest in those journals? The best I could be, and so, can be. Okay. And and so, what you put in the journals is how you recall everything came down that night. Through my eyes, yes. And you have uh, attempted to sell those journals to uh, book publishers, have you not? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, when did you start trying to sell those journals to book publishers? I'm not sure. Can you give me a time frame, sir? No, sir. Has it been? When was the last time? When was, do you recall when the first time you did? No. You recall when the last time you did? No. Do you recall who you sent it to? No. you recall how many people you sent it to? No. Did anyone, did you ever get any response from any of the folks that you sent it to? No. Uh, yeah, I think I did. I think one of them told me to send them $1,200 and they would work on it. Did you keep any documents or records of the folks that you sent the, the 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 journals to, the publishers? No. Not that I can recall. Okay. Do you ever recall telling folks that you had a book deal? Sure. You were lying. Oh no, no, I don't think I said I had a book deal. No. Okay. You ever you never told anybody you had a book deal? Mm, maybe not like you're trying to say. I might have told them I was working on one, would like to get one. Okay. But you never told anybody you had a book deal? I'm not sure. Well, if you did, that'd be a lie, wouldn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, have you ever had a book deal? No. Okay. So if you told somebody you had a book deal, that'd be a lie. I might have told somebody I was working on one at the time. Consider yourself an honest man, Mr. Holmes. I try. Um, who else have you sold your life story to other than Dimension Films? Nobody that I can recall. So if you te if if someone else, so you've never testified to that or not testified, you've never said that that you sold your life story, had a deal to sell your life story to somebody else. I'm not sure. You're not sure, or you didn't. I don't recall saying something okay. like that. Okay. And do you recall uh, any other efforts or discussions with folks to sell your story, life story, to other entities for book deals or movie deals or anything like that? Well, we've always talked about books, mm -hmm. and, but I'm, I don't know of anyone else that I've talked to to buy it. Okay. Not right off. What about movies or films? What the uh, HBO made a couple documentaries, right? Uh, That's Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost Two. It is. Any other films? No. Were you compensated with regard to the HBO films about the murders? No, sir. Okay. But you really you signed releases so that you could appear in those, right? I'm not. I don't remember. Okay. You were okay with being in those. Well, we we all talked about it. Who's we? Every family involved. What you? The, of the of, of the three little boys. Correct. All right. And well, what do you recall discussing with the family of the three little boys about the two HBO movies? Some of us didn't want to do it. Some of them wanted to do it. How'd you come out on that? How'd I come out? I don't recall. They were going to do it anyway. You watch the video, the, the the documentaries. 
Well, I did. What'd you think of them? Totally wrong. In what respects? The portrayal. Portrayal of who? You? No. Of who? The convicted. How was it totally wrong? They kind of portrayed them as being innocent. Uh, how else were the documentaries totally wrong? Couldn't tell you. Okay. You've never been deposed before, have you, Mr. Hobbs? Been where? Deposed. Had to do, had to do this before. No. Okay. Never testified in court before. No. Ever been a party to a lawsuit before? No. Nope. You have to answer that loud. No. Nope. Okay. Well, he's been a party to a divorce proceeding. I understand. I, understand. I, I, meant, I meant more of a civil. No, sir. Okay. I've been through a divorce. Two okay. of them. Two of them. It happens. Um, what you, very briefly, sir, what's your educational background? High school. Finish high school? No. Tenth grade? Is that the last year? Roughly, I believe it was. Okay. Did you finish the tenth grade? I don't remember. Okay. Where did you go to school? Well, I went to Cave City High School and Poughkeepsie High School here in Arkansas. Okay. Well, why'd you drop out? I couldn't tell you. Young and dumb. No other formal education? No. Manager's training. I graduated there as a manager. You graduated where as a manager? Manager's training center in Memphis. Okay. Is that a house? It is. You own that house? No, sir. Who owns the house? Dave and... Kilpatrick. You rent it from Mr. Kilpatrick? Some. I put a room in there. You rent, so you, he lives there as well? Mm -hmm. Him and his wife. Okay. And how long have you lived with Mr. Kilpatrick? A couple years. Okay. Who else lives there? Their daughter. How old is she? Twenty something. Who else lives there? Her boyfriend. What's his name? Ernest. Ernest what? I don't know. Okay. Who else lives there? Nobody I know of. Okay. Where'd you live before that? Uh, on Macon Road. What's, what address? I don't remember. Was it a house? It was. Did you own that house? Rented. Who'd you rent it from? I don't recall his name. Did he live there too? No, he lived in Mississippi. Okay. Was that in Tennessee? The Mike and Road House was in Tennessee. How long have you lived in Tennessee? Since 94. Okay. Con consistently since that time you've lived there? Mm hmm You have to answer out loud. Yes. Okay. Where do you currently work? Discount building supply. How long have you worked there? A little over two years. And what do you do for them? I'm a salesman. What do you sell? Anything to build a house with. Okay. You had any discussions with anybody there about this lawsuit? Oh, we talk about everything there. You talk about the lawsuit? We have. Who have you talked to the lawsuit about at your work? Probably every employee there. Can you can you name the the five people that you've talked to the most about this lawsuit? Who are at your at the at the job? Probably Terry, Brett, Chris. I'm sorry. I need Terry. Terry Davis. Terry Davis. Brett Anderson. Brett Anderson. Chris Cook. Okay. Who else? I don't even know the rest of them's last name. 
Well, what are their first names? Vince. And who else? Give me one more. Luther. Okay. What have you What have you talked to them about the lawsuit about? Huh? What have you talked to them about? About the lawsuit. I'm not sure. I don't keep up with it. Okay. Have you told them you're going to get rich off this lawsuit? No. We don't you talk told, about money. Have you told anybody you're going to get rich off this lawsuit? No, that I can recall. Have you told anyone that uh, you've already received an offer to pay you off in this lawsuit? Mm -mm. You have to answer out loud. No. And if you did, if you did, that'd be a lie, wouldn't it? No, I'm, I imagine. Ain't no one offered me nothing. Right. So if you told someone that you'd been offered money, that'd be a lie, right? I guess. Right. And have you ever told anybody that you would pay them a portion of the money that you got out of this lawsuit? No. So if anybody testified about that, they'd be lying. Yeah. Because you're not going to share your money, are you? I'm not about money. Okay, you're not about money. You're about humiliation. Right? Okay. Isn't that right? Isn't that what this is all about? Humiliation. You know what you said? Earlier. Well, is that right? Is that what this is all about, Mr. Hobbs? Humiliation? Objection. It assumes facts, not in evidence. He didn't say it was all hey, you about You know what? It's objection form or not, or we're going to get on the phone with the judge. Uh -huh. Okay? He's, you can't you can't coach this witness. I get to ask you my questions. You cannot misrepresent his well, answers object, in your questions. Object to form. That's what I did. Yeah, and then you started to talk. Characterizing the evidence. Can you answer the question, Mr. Hobbs? Isn't this all about humiliation? This to me is about justice. Okay. You've been humiliated about the about the allegations, right? That have been made against you. Correct. And you want to humil you want to get revenge, humiliate against the people I who made it. I want my day in court. I want my form of justice as the court deems necessary. Okay. That will make me a little more happier. We need to change the tape, so let's go off. And then I just got about five minutes, then we'll take a break. It'll be a good time for a break, but I want to ask one set of questions, so off the record. We're going off record to change tapes at 9.59 a.m. And we are now back on record after a tape change at 10.02 a.m. Mr. Hobbs, you, you understand that you're still under oath? I do. Okay. I have, um, I'll be honest, as part of this lawsuit, I have learned more about the, the events of May the 5th than, than I ever knew about. Um, and I will also be honest in that in reading these materials, uh, looking at your police interview, reading your journal, listening to what other people said, it's, uh, it's still unclear to me as to what happened that night. So I wanted you to tell the ladies and the gentlemen of the jury, in your own words, what, what happened that night and what you did from when you got off work until the three little boys were found. I want you to tell us in your own words what happened. Can you do that? I can. Please do. But I'd rather not. Well, I appreciate that you'd rather not, but I need you to. You've brought, if you you've brought had this to lawsuit. relive Mr. something like this. Mr. Hobbs, you've brought the lawsuit. You chose to relive it. And so I want you to look into that camera and tell the ladies and the jury under oath what happened that day and what you did. I did what a parent would have done. I want you to walk me through from when you got off work what you did and what happened until the little boys were found. And I apologize if it's hard to relive. I have two little boys of my own and I can only imagine. No, you can't. I can only imagine the pain. You cannot. Well, maybe I can't. But I've lost a, I've lost a brother to sudden death as well. So I think I have a little empathy, maybe not as much. But I need you, since you brought this lawsuit, to look into that camera and tell the jury what happened. As a parent, 
I come home from work May the 5th, 1993. Yes, sir. I noticed that one of my children was not at home. I asked my wife, where's Stevie? He's gone off riding his bicycle with his friend Michael Moore. I did what any other parent would have done. I'd go outside and look down the street, seeing when he's supposed to come home. He's supposed to have been home before 30. Couldn't, didn't see him on the sidewalk. Pam cooking supper, wife, had to be at work by 5 o'clock. We we don't eat supper because Stevie's not home. We always eat supper together. And it comes 5 o'clock. Getting close to 5 o'clock, we decide to go ahead and take Pam to work. That's you and Amanda? Me and Amanda and Pam. And Pam, Pam you and Amanda decided to take Pam to work. We all three decided that but she is time for her to go work. Between 4.30 and when you got home, it was time to take Pam, other than walking out and looking in the street. Did you do anything to find Stevie? Not before then. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, we... Take Pam to work by 5 o'clock, we stopped over at the Moore's house. Pam, Pam worked where? At Catfish Island Restaurant okay. in how, West Memphis. How long did it take you to get from your house to the catfish place? Roughly 10 minutes. Okay. And did she get there right at 5 or a few minutes before? She usually tried to go in a few minutes early. Okay. And then you and Amanda then went back to your house? We stopped by the Moore's house, Michael Moore's parents' home, on the way over there. To okay. take Pam to work. Were, 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 were they home? No. Did you Her ring daughter the, was there. Did you you rang the bell and talked to the daughter? Pam might have. I'm not sure if it was me or Pam that done that. Okay. Well, Pam, Amanda was what four? Correct. So you sat in the car and sent your four year old to the door. I said Pam. Oh, Pam. I thought it was. Well, no. Hold on now. We've already. We were on our way to take Pam to work. Okay. Well, my question before. I apologize. My question before had been before you got home, after you got home and before you dropped Pam off, what you had done other than go outside in the street, and you said nothing. Now you and Pam and Amanda stopped at the Moors on the way, or was that on the, after you dropped Pam off? I'm, I'm, so you can see why I'm confused, Mr. Hobbs. On our way to take Pam to work, we stopped at the Moors' home. Okay. So um, Pam was still with you at that time? Yes, sir. Okay. And... Pam went to the front, to the Moore's house. One of us did. You were Pam, you don't remember which. Correct. And you rang the bell, and Mrs. Moore wasn't there, but their daughter was there? Yes. And who was their daughter? Don Moore. And how old was Don at the time? I think she was a little bit older than Stevie. Okay. Eight, nine, ten? Something like that. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. And no one, no one else was home. Stevie obviously wasn't there. Correct. Okay. And so, and then at that point, the, you went from the moors to the catfish place? We did. Took and time you, to work. And you got to the catfish place a little bit before 5, and it took 5 minutes to get from your house to, to the catfish place. Where's the moors in relation to the, the route you would have taken from They're your house? They're en route to her. Okay. From our home to her work. Do you recall what time you left your house to no, I don't. stop at the Moors? No. Okay. All right. So you drop, then you drop, you and Amanda drop Pam off at 5 o'clock. Roughly. Then you go, roughly. And then you go back home. You don't stop at the Moors again, right? I stop at the Moors home on the way back to see if the boys had made it there. Okay. And, and they were not there. Did you go to the front door or did Amanda? I did. Okay, so now you went to the front door. And was just the daughter there still? Yes. Anybody else there? Not that I could see. All right. Then what, then what happened? Well, we ride around the neighborhood looking for them because we know they're on bicycles. And so you and Amanda drove around the neighborhood? We did. We did that for a while. Do you recall how long? No, I don't. But anyway, we're riding around the neighborhood looking for our little boys on bicycles. We don't find them. Did you know who Stevie was with at that point? Well, he was supposed to have been with Michael Moore. That's all I knew. Okay. So we go where did you Where did you drive around looking? Our neighborhood that we live in. Okay. West Memphis. 
all over West Memphis. In our neighborhood. How, what's the, does the neighborhood have a? It does not. The, what would be the boundaries of the area in which you searched then, Mr. Hobbs? From our home to his home. To the Moore's home? Correct. And where is uh, the Robin Hood area? Where is that in relation to that? Robin Hood was behind the Moore's and Byers home. Okay. Okay. So you stop at the Moore's, no one except the daughter's there. You drive around with your four-year-old daughter for a while. Right. Then what happened? And we go to the back to our home, and we park the car, and me and Amanda walk around the neighborhood. Do you recall about what time that is, sir? No, I don't. Was it before 6 or after 6? I don't recall. Okay. But we're riding around the neighborhood, or right. walking around at Thank this you. point, uh, seeing if we could hear them, you know, see them or something, and we don't. So we go back to our house. And Don Moore's pulls you know, up in my about, driveway. Do you know about what time you went back to your house? No, I don't. You have any sense? Seven o'clock, six thirty, seven, eight, nine? No, I don't. Was it light? It was still daylight. Okay. Boom. So you went back to your house and Miss Moore then came to your house. And she pulls up in our driveway. Okay. And she asked us if Michael Moore's at our house and I said no, it's Stevie at yours. She said, no, but I'm heading back to her house, or she's heading back to her house. And I said, we'll follow you over there, see if, that, if the boys are there. Uh, we get over her house. The boys are not there. And we're standing in her front yard uh, talking. And here comes John Mark Byers walking across the street. That's the first time I met John Mark Byers. Do you recall about what time this was, sir? No, I don't. He asked, is Christopher over at the Moore's home? And we, you know, Don or Dan speaks up and tells him no. And it might have been then when we figure out they all three might have been together. Mr. Hobbs, I hate to interrupt, but you're covering your microphone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. How long were you at the Moore's before Mr. Byers? So I'm not sure. I mean, five minutes, ten minutes, a half hour? No, I'm not sure. Was it a short period of time or a long period of time? No, I'm not sure. How long were you at the Moore's house? Wasn't that long, but I'm not, I don't know how long. Wasn't long. Okay. All right, so then when Mr. Mr. Byers shows up, you looking for his son, right? Correct. Um, then what happened? We just split up and start looking for him. Okay. Split Don up. Don stays at the home and says she'll wait by the phone in case somebody called. Um, I take my daughter over to a friend's home. Who's that? And David Jacoby and his wife Bobby. They had little kids also. Uh, I, David goes with me, and we start riding around looking for the little boys. At the same time, the buyers, Mark and Melissa, are riding around looking for their boy. And, and we continue this for all the way up to the next morning. Okay. Uh, I need to fill in a few, obviously fill in a few um, A few blanks. How long were you at Mr. Jacoby's house? Long enough to drop my daughter off and see if he'd go help me. Okay, and did he go help you? He went around with me and we rode around looking. He sure did. All the way up till early in the morning. Well, let's back up. So what, what time, do you recall what time you left Amanda at Mr. Jacoby's house? No, I don't. Do you recall how long? And you and Mr. Jacoby drove around in a car looking? We did. Your car or his car? Probably mine. Okay. What kind of car did you, were you driving? I don't remember. Where'd you, where'd you drive around? The whole city of West Memphis. Just in your neighborhood or just all the over? The whole city of West Memphis. Okay.
Did you play any Guitar Hero while you were at Mr. Jacoby's? I don't recall. I don't remember that. You don't remember playing Guitar Hero at Mr. Jacoby's for a while? Not that day. I don't remember. You used to play Guitar Hero a lot at his house, right? No, never. Never played Guitar Hero at his house? I played guitars at his house. Okay, guitars, I'm But sorry. not the game. Right, I apologize. Do you recall playing guitars at his house that night? No. You don't recall or you didn't? I don't recall. Did you smoke any marijuana while you were at his house? No. That night? No. Do you any other drugs while you were at his house that night? No. While you were out looking for the boys, prior to the time that you went to pick Pam up at work, did you ever find the boys? No. If somebody testifies that they saw you with the boys that night, do what? If somebody testified that they saw you and the boys, would they be lying? Mm -hmm. They would be lying. Because you never found the boys? No, I never found them. Never found them alive? Never found them at all. Okay. So if, Mr. if someone were to testify that they saw the three little boys standing behind you on the evening of May the 5th, prior to the time that you went to pick up Pam, They'd be mistaken. And most definitely. I can't wait to hear that one. <laughs> Did you see Stevie at all that day, May the 5th? No, I did not. Did you see any of the three boys that day? No, I did not. So you didn't give Stevie... What time was Stevie supposed to be home? You said 4.30? Pam told me 4.30. Okay. You never gave Stevie permission to stay out later that night? No, I never seen Stevie that day. Okay. Did you talk to Stevie that day? No. Did you have a phone in your house? Uh-huh. Did you we have did. to answer out loud? Was it, was it working? Sure. Okay. So you and Mr. Jacoby, so you dropped your daughter, Amanda, off at Mr. Jacoby's, and you and Mr. Jacoby drove around all over West Memphis looking for the three little boys. Good answer. Well, I'm just, that's not my answer. I'm just, that's, what, that's your testimony, right? It is. Okay. And you never found them? We never. You never saw them? Never. At some point then, you, what, what time did you stop looking with Mr. Jacoby? David had to be at work May the 6th, roughly a.m., early a.m., May the 6th. When did you call the police to report that your son was missing? When we picked Pam up from work. Which was? 9 p.m. May the 5th. 9-11, exactly. Correct. Okay. Does that sound about right, that you made the I call at 9-11? I know we called from Catfish Island when I picked her up at work. And at that point, Stevie was four and a half hours late? 4.30 to 9. Why didn't you call the police sooner? I was busy looking and just thinking he was playing at some boy's house. Were you mad at him? No. You weren't mad at him for being late? No. No, we didn't act like that. You didn't act like that? What do you mean by that, sir? We just didn't act like that. Were you lenient with him? You didn't punish him much? I was with good parents. That's not my question. Did you punish him much? No. Didn't you tell the police in June of 07 that you used to hit him with a belt? If we corrected him with the belt, we would whoop him with a belt, but no, we didn't go around hitting him with belts. Well, so you did when you got mad at him, you would hit him with a belt. You'd, you'd punish him with a belt. No. No? So you no. were lying to the police then? No. Sure wouldn't. 
Well, what is it? When you would punish him, would you hit him with the belt or not? Well, there was other forms of punishment besides whooping him with belt. I understand that, but would you whoop him with a belt? I have. Okay. And you used to leave marks on him, didn't you? Not that I ever seen. Did you lose your temper very often? No. Pretty even keel guy? Try to be. You ever hit your wife? Slapped her once. Only once? Mm-hmm. You have to answer out loud? Yes. Okay. All right, so how long before you had to go? Because it was just you and Amanda went to pick up Pam, right? Correct. So at some point you had to go back to Mr. Jacoby's house to get your daughter? Yes. At what point did you go back to Mr. Jacoby's house to get your daughter? Before I went and picked Pam up. I understand that. How long? I don't know. Did you spend any time at Mr. Jacoby's house after you were out looking and you came back to get Amanda before you went to pick up Pam? Or was it, let's get, come on, Amanda, we got to go? I'm sure I took her over there, dropped her off, or took him back home, picked her up, and went and picked Pam up. I'm not sure how long we was there. Did you have something to drink? I don't drink. Well, maybe a glass of water? No. And you don't drink? You don't drink alcohol? No. Did you then? A little bit, socially. Socially? Well, did you have anything to drink that night? No. And it's your testimony you weren't mad at your stepson for being out late? Correct. When you and Mr. Jacoby were driving around looking for Pam, looking for Stevie prior to 9 o'clock, did you get out of the car at all? Sure. Where? Different places in West Memphis. Do you we recall? Go under, we pulled up in this wooded place, walked down a path under a bridge. What wooded place? I don't know what it's called. Just, we didn't know what we was looking for. We were just looking. So you were just... Walking around in the woods? At different times, yes. Did you ever end up walking around in what's referred to as Robin Hill? Robin? We we have we done that. So you and you and Mr. Jacoby got out and walked around in the Robin Robin Hood Hills area prior to the time you picked Pam up, looking for the little boys. Well, I'm not sure if we went to Robin Hood, but we was all over West Memphis looking for. My our question, boys. my question to you, sir, is when you and Mr. Jacoby were looking for the three little boys prior to the time that you picked up Pam, did you get out of the car and walk around the Robin? I'm not sure. Well, wouldn't that be something that, that would seem to be something that you, sh you would remember if that's where the little boys were eventually found and you were there. So it's your testimony. You, you can't recall if you search the area where the three little boys were actually found? Correct. Come on, we didn't. I'm sorry? We didn't. You didn't? You, you didn't see, search the area? Where they were found, like you said, no. What about that general area? Did you get out of the car in that general area? Is this question still referring to the same time the frame? The same time frame. 15 Absolutely. minutes ago. Absolutely, Ted. Nah, I don't recall. I'm you not don't, sure. You don't but recall? We were in and out all over town, getting in and out, going different places, looking for our little boys. Okay. And then anything else that you did other than drive around with Mr. Jacoby, in and out of the car, different places, prior to the time that you picked up Pam? Not that I recall. Okay. You picked up Pam, 9 o'clock. She came out with some candy for both kids. Correct. And did you tell her that Stevie was still missing, or did you walk right past her to make a call? No, she come out with two pieces of candy, and she said, where's Stevie? And I said, we hadn't found him yet. And then what did she say? He's dead. And what did you say? Don't say that. Then what happened? One of us went and called the police. Who? I don't know. You don't remember if you called the police or Pam called the police? Sure don't. 
don't care. You called the police, didn't you? I don't, couldn't tell you. You don't know? I don't know. Do you know what the police were told when they were called at 9-11? Mm-mm. You have to answer out loud. No. Do you know what the police response was? They came out and took a police report. Came out where? To Catfish Island. We were still there when they came. And, and how did. long how long did it take for them to get to Catfish Island? I'm not sure. It wasn't long. Half hour? Five minutes? An I'm hour? Not sure. What's what's not long in that in that sense of time, Mr. Hobbs? I'm not sure. They just, we called the police, they showed up, no one time them. And who was looking for Stevie at this time? while you were waiting at Catfish Island for the police to show up? Well, I don't know who was looking for Stevie. I don't know. To your knowledge, was anybody? I don't know if there was anyone out there looking for Stevie. Was anybody looking for the other two boys as well? You would hope. Okay, but you don't know that? Correct. And then you, the police came to Catfish Island. You made a police report, right? We did. And then what happened? And then what happened? We leave Catfish Island. We go to Robin Hood with the police. Why'd you go to Robin Hood with the police? That's the last place that we had heard that someone had seen them. Well, wait a second now. Who said that they had seen the boys at Robin Hood? A lot of people. Who? I don't know their names. Can you give me one person who told you prior to the time that the police came to Catfish, who told you that they had seen the boys at Robin Hood? No, I cannot. Well, and you told the police that they were last seen at Robin Hood, right? That's what we were, had been told. Who told you? And that when you say we, I that's what somebody you. had told you. Exactly. And who had told you that the boys were last seen at Robin Hood? I'm not sure of their names. Well, a where, local. where did you find these people? We were going door to door, or people out in their front yard to ask them, have you seen three little boys? On bicycles? Uh-huh. Well, yes. Someone had told us that we'd seen them going into Robin Hood. And do you recall, you don't recall who that was? No, I don't. It was someone in your neighborhood? No, in the neighborhood of Robin Hood. Was it a, a, a man or a woman who told you that? It seemed like it was a man. Do you recall? And I, t I take it you don't know that person's name? Correct. you know how old that person was? No. Teenager? An elderly person? Older person. Kind of old like me or... Old like my grandfather. I couldn't tell you, just older, an adult. An adult, okay. And was this between four and six before you went to the Jacobis that somebody told you this, or was this when you were with Mr. Jacoby driving around? It was before I picked Pam up. That's not my question. I'm not sure of your answer. Well, it's not my answer. It's your answer. I want to know, did the, some, did the person who told you that they had last seen the boys in the Robin Hood area, was that before or after you went to Mr. Jacoby's house? I'm not sure. Were you alone searching for Stevie any time between 4 and 6 o'clock? No. Were you alone searching for Stevie any time between... Well, let me back up. Between four and six, it was you and Amanda? Me and Amanda after we took Pam to work. Okay. And Amanda at this point was four? She was. All right. And between six o'clock and, say, seven o'clock, were you alone at any point in time looking for Stevie? No. That Not was all, to my knowledge. was always with Amanda? Amanda or David. Or Mr. Jacob. There was a time I picked David up. All right. And then you were with David from the time that you dropped Amanda off at his house until you went back to his house to pick up Amanda to go get Pam. Is that your testimony? I was with David and a lot of other people from time to time. Okay. And the other people were the other people in the neighborhood looking for the three little boys? Yes, sir.
after you picked a man after you picked Pam up, you went back to your house. We went to Robin Hood first. Went Robin Hood first with the police. Correct. Did you go into the woods? We did. Did you see anything? Woods, growed up brush. How long were you at Robin Hood with the police? I don't recall. Long time or short time? Short time because it was coming up on their shift change. Okay. Do you recall when the shift change was? No, I don't. And how many police officers were with you and Pam and Amanda and looking in the Robin Hoods area? Well, first of all, Amanda wasn't there. Well, I thought Amanda, I thought you went straight from Catfish to the Well, I Robin think she sat in the car. I don't think she got out. Okay, but she was with you in the car but didn't okay. get out. Okay, okay. And then you and Pam and the police officer got out. Mm -hmm. How many police officers yes. were there? One. And do you recall who that was? Regina Meeks. Okay. And how long, did you you don't recall how long you spent there? No, but it wasn't long. Five minutes? Maybe that or a little longer. Okay. And then after that you went home? I believe we did. Okay. And what did you do when you got home? Do you recall what time you got home? No, sir. Approximate? No. Do you have any idea, a sense of how long between the time you, Pam, had gotten off work until the time you got home? No, I don't. What happened when you got home? Well, we changed clothes and went back out. Pam changed clothes out of her work clothes? She did. And you changed clothes? Probably. I don't remember. Why would you have changed clothes? I said probably. I don't remember. Okay. Would, you know, if, probably, if you changed clothes, why would you have changed clothes? Because I wanted to. Why? I don't have a why. You just did? If I did. It's because I wanted to. I might have had on nicer clothes and wanted to put on something that wasn't so nice, being okay. out there in the woods. Okay. And how long were you at home before you and Pam then went back out? I'm not sure. And did you and Pam then go out together? We did. Who, who was watching Amanda? Probably the Jacobis. Did you take Amanda to the Jacobis, or were the Jacobis at your house? No, we would probably take them back over there. Okay, so you took Amanda. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. So then you and Pam changed. You took Amanda to the Jacobis. We did. You, you and Pam took Amanda to the Jacobis, dropped her off, and then went and searched some more. Yes, sir. Where'd you go? And just you and Pam at that point. David might have went with us. Matter of fact, David did go with us. Walking or driving? Driving. Your car or his car? Probably ours. Okay. Do you recall what car? No, cause, no, I don't. Okay. Where'd you go look? Well, we. It was kind of hard to get your focus off of Robin Hood, because we were told that they were last seen going into Robin Hood, and not knowing what Robin Hood was. When you go out there and look at it, it was a place that you didn't want to see your kids hanging out at. So we went back to Robin Hood. Direct off from the Jacobis. Well, I'm not going to say direct. But that was where you were, that's where you ended up. It was. Do you recall about what time you got to Robin Hood with you and Mr. Jacoby and, a man, and Pam? No, I don't. Did you get out of the car? Did you guys get out of the car? We did. Did you walk back in the woods? Yeah. We did. Were there areas of the woods that you just, did, you just didn't go back in because you didn't, didn't like the feeling? You just didn't. We didn't know what was out there. That's not my question. My question was, were there parts of the woods that you have said that you just got a bad feeling and you didn't want to go back into? Yeah. Describe, describe that for me. Well, it's dark, and you don't know what's out there, so you just don't want to go out there. But your stepson's out there. We didn't know that. You know he's somewhere. We didn't know he was out there. 
You knew he was out there missing. We knew he was last seen going. Someone said they had last seen him going in there. We did not know he was out there. And did you say, I'm not going back in there? I don't recall that. You say, I had a bad feeling about this place, I'm not going back there? Well, there was a part of it. I you, might have said that too. Who, who would you have told that to? I got a bad feeling about this place, I'm not going back there. David and my father-in-law, Jackie Hicks, Sr. Well, Jackie was with you now, too? He was. Who else was with you? Well, there was a different people at different times. How many people, when, when did when did your father-in-law hook up with you after you went to the Jacobis? Pam called him. And not, my question was, when did, when did he hook up with you as part of the search? Because when we left the Jacobis, it was you and Mr. Jacob, Mr. Jacoby and Amanda, I'm sorry, and Pam in the car. So I'm trying to figure out when all these other people joined up with you. Amanda was probably at the state at the Jacobis. Exactly, and it was it was you and Pam and Mr. Jacoby. And her dad and mother were en route from Blavel to West Memphis. Okay, and how did they know to end up at Robin Hood? How uh, we met up with them somewhere. Where? I couldn't tell you. When? Couldn't tell you. Is that before or after you'd been to Robin Hood the first time? Probably after. Well, I know it was. The first time was with the police. Right. And then the first you, time might have been before the police when we was the, in the neighborhood. With you, and, with you and David. And some of the neighborhood locals. Okay. And then you went back with the police. Correct. With Pam. And Pam. And then you went, you and Mr. Jacoby and Pam. Was that just the three of you? And then you went back a fourth time? Or did you have your father-in-law and a bunch of other folks there? We were in and out of Robin Hood all night long. Okay. Okay. And at one point, Mr. Jacoby had to go home because he had to be at work the next day, right? Correct. And what time was that? Did, did Mr. Jacoby? A.M., early A.M. No, no. What time did you take Mr. Jacoby back to his I'm house? I'm not sure. Before midnight or after midnight? After. Before 2 or after 2? I'm not sure. Sometime between midnight and 2? Before daylight. It's not my question. I'm before, not sure. Before 2? Not sure. After you dropped Mr. Jacoby off at his house, you went back to your, you and Pam went back to your house? Seemed like we might have. Well, you did, right? That's what's in the journal. That's what's been testified to. That's what you told the police, right? Okay. Well, I'm not, okay. That's what you told the police, right? All right. And then, then what happened? Well, we go to school the morning of the 6th where the boys went to school to see if they have arrived at school. And they were not there. Okay. So when you got home, when after you dropped Mr. Jacoby off and you and Pam went home, what happened, Mr. Hobbs, between then and when you went to school? Well, I know the media showed up and did a live interview because we have been trying to get to, we were in and out of the police department three, two or three times that night down there asking them for help. We were... And the police weren't searching at that point, were they? We didn't see them. Okay. It was all just private citizens, if Family. you Family. Family. And neighbors, friends. Friends. But the media showed up. They were at the school, right? Or were they at your house? It seemed like the media was out in Robin Hood. I don't really remember, but it seemed like they were in Robin Hood. Okay. But my question is between, say, 2 o'clock when you, or whenever you dropped Mr. Jacoby off, sometime between midnight and 2, and you went back to the house. Seemed like I dropped Mr. Jacoby off, or I didn't drop him off, or we might have, I'm not sure. But he had to be at work uh, a.m. on the 6th. I understand that. And so he we got wanted, back. And I wanted him to go to work okay. and tell our boss what we was doing. So is it your testimony Mr. Jacoby was with you all night until he went to work? Is that your testimony? Well, he was with Pam. There was a time he was with Pam, and there was a, uh, we might have all been together. Well, 
Uh, yeah, I'm trying, I to doubt figure, it. I'm trying to figure out what happened. And I want you to tell me the best you can, Mr. Hobbs, under oath. Did you take Mr. Jacoby home sometime before 2 so he could get some sleep before work, or was he with you right up until the time he had to go to work? I don't re remember that. Was there a point in time when you went home and left Pam at home? Mm, no. So Pam was with you all night? Or her dad and mom. They would come down and we went in separate vehicles. There was a time when me and David rode around. There was a time me and Pam rode around. There was a time we all followed each other around. Okay. From, I want to specifically focus on what happened, say, between 1 in the morning and 6 in the morning. Where were you? With uh, family and friends and the police. There was never, so it's your testimony, there was never a point in time when you were alone between 1 and 6 a.m. Is that your testimony, sir? I believe that's correct. Okay. And were you out searching this entire time, or were you at home? Searching. So you never were at home? Well, there was a time we went home. I'm not sure what time, but yeah, there was a time we went home. And then after you went home, did you go back out? Sure. And did Pam go with you? Yeah. Where did you go searching then? Robin Hood riding around West Memphis at the school. Okay. Did you do, uh, there's been some discussion in the media over the years about you doing laundry the evening of the, the 5th or the morning of the 6th. No, Call that? It didn't happen. You didn't do any laundry? No, I didn't. So if someone were to testify that they saw you doing laundry in the morning of the sixth, the evening of the fifth or morning of the sixth, beds, bed sheets, drapes, curtains, clothes, all that crap, all that stuff, they would be lying. Most definitely. Okay. Would you agree with me that under the circumstances that if you had done laundry that that would have been a most unusual time to do it? Well, I'm not going to agree with you because it didn't happen. Okay. But if it did happen. It didn't. Assume with me that it did. I would will you, not. Would you agree that it would be most unusual to do it, to do laundry at that point, given what's going on in your life at that point, sir? Somebody, well, it didn't happen in my life, so I, I don't know how to answer that. If Pam would have done laundry, would you have agreed that that would have been a most unusual time to do laundry? We don't have a, a schedule for doing things. we just done them. That's not my question. Would you agree that if someone's child has been missing, is missing and that a police report has been filed and that family and friends are out searching the night and searching the woods that it would be most unusual for a parent of one of those missing children to do laundry. If it happened it probably would be. Would be most unusual. I would think. Did you speak with the media on the morning of the 6th? I'm not sure. Mr. Hobbs, we've been going for, for some period of time. It's probably a good time to take a break. Five minute, uh, what I like to call personal comfort break. Sounds good. We are going off record for a break at 10.43 a.m. And we are now back on record after a break at 10.58 a.m. Thank you. Mr. Hobbs, you understand you're still under oath? Yes, sir. All right. Why do you think the little boys were killed? Don't know why. You think it was something that got out of hand, or you I think it know. was planned? I don't know. Did you ever tell anybody that uh, you thought it was something that got out of hand? I don't remember that. Did you ever tell anybody that uh, didn't think the people could handle the truth of what happened? I don't recall that. You don't recall that? Mm -mm. If somebody testified that you said that, would they be lying? I'm not sure. In your journal, you uh, you said that the boys were overkilled. What do you mean by that? The medical examiner made that statement. I was just repeating him. Okay. So it's okay to repeat things that are said in court? 
I did mine. I'm sorry? I did mine. I still didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I did you repeat did. his statement. And, and that's okay. That doesn't, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I don't know. Well, you didn't think you did anything wrong when you repeated what the medical examiner said in court, did you? That's what he said. Well, did you think you were saying or doing anything wrong when you repeated what was said in, in court? No. Okay. After you divorced Pam, or maybe even before you divorced Pam, you had a girlfriend, didn't you? That would have been after. Okay. After you divorced Pam. You had a girlfriend, right? I had a lady friend. What was her name? One of them, Sharon Nelson. Okay. When did you start? When did you start dating Mrs. Nelson? I Ms. couldn't Nelson. tell you. Is she an honest lady? Well, you might want to ask her. I'm asking you. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not she's an honest and truthful lady? I don't know. You have any reason to doubt anything that she says? Sure do. Why? Because of the statement that she made to somebody. Well, what statement are you referring to? The one that you have a copy of. You don't know what statements I have. What statement? I are do you too. Well, what statement are you referring to? The one you have a copy of, made by Miss Sharon Nelson. Well, what did she say that causes you to question whether or not she's she's an honest and truthful woman? She made the statement that I told her that I discovered the boy's body before the police? What else did she say? I couldn't tell you. Well, did you ever tell her that? Never, not one time in my life. Okay. Did you do drugs when you were in her? In her uh, no. You didn't do any drugs when you were around her? No. Do any drinking when you were around her? Is that still when you were drinking? If I did, it'd been a beer. Just a beer? Probably. So I'm not sure if I did or not. And at what time was she your, not girlfriend, woman friend? Lady friend? You said what time? During what time frame? I'm not, after I divorced Pam. When did you divorce Pam? Seemed like that was in 05, okay. 06, 05 maybe. And how long after you divorced Pam in 05, 06 did you get this lady friend? I don't know. Well, then. 06, 07, 07, 08? Sounds good. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I want you to tell me when you first. I don't keep up with stuff like that. When did, did you live with her? No. no. I had my own home. You had your own home. She was your, she was your lady friend. Mm -hmm. Close? Close. No. Intimate? <laughs> I don't know. Well, were you intimate with her? I doubt it. Well, so you don't, you don't remember if you were intimate with her? Uh, probably. Probably? Yeah, she's not the type that you just hook up with. What do you mean by that? <laughs> she wasn't my pick of the litter. What do you mean by that? Just what I said. When you say something, when she says she wasn't your pick of the litter, what does that mean? I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not familiar with that term. There's nicer ladies out there. Okay, but you, you spent time with her. I did. Had conversations with her. Sure. Had conversations with her about Stevie and the murders. Uh, well, about Stevie. Sure. Sure. Had conversations with her about the murders. No. No. No conversation. Well, no conversations about the the trial. Probably with the trial. With the trial. Any conversations with her about the West Memphis Three? Probably. Okay. Uh, and. Did you tell her at any point in time, did you discuss with her what happened, what you thought happened to the three little boys? Probably to some degree. What did you tell her? I couldn't tell you. Were you honest and truthful with her? I tried to be. Okay. And uh, now she has said that you told her that you found the little boys prior to the police finding them, right? I read that. Okay. And did you? Did you find the little boys prior to the police finding them, Mr. Hobbs? No, sir. Mike Allen of the West Memphis Police Department found the little boys. My question is, did you find them before he did? No, I did not. Did you put them under water before he did? No. You re you, you he didn't do it either. Well, he didn't do it either. <laughs> didn't ever said he did it. Matter of fact, no one's, Miss Hobbs, Miss Pastar didn't say you did it either, did she? She didn't say you did that. 
Objection calls for a legal conclusion. You're not aware of Ms. Hobbs, Ms. Passar ever saying you did that, are you? You need to check with her. No, I need to check with you. Are you aware of, of her saying at any point in time that you killed those little boys? I believe she did. When? When did she say you in killed Little those? Rock on the internet? And when you say Little Rock, you mean the rally? Mm -hmm. Have you looked at the YouTube video of that rally? Uh, no, I haven't. Right. Do you know if your name is even mentioned at the rally? Uh, it seemed like it was. Why do you say that? Who told you that it was? Uh, the newspaper, the media, okay. TVs. And they said that she, and it's your testimony that the the media and the newspapers reported that Miss Pazdar mentioned you by name at the rally. She brought up the new DNA and wh whereby knew what the new DNA was all about. How did they know? Ask them. Well, you, well let's, I'm going to ask you, and the reason is, is after the DNA results, you were informed by the DNA results, you picked up or you had somebody pick up the phone and call the media yourself, didn't you? I don't remember that. You don't remember reaching out to the media to get your story out about the DNA prior sure. to the time? You did, didn't you? After the fact. After what fact? That they come up with some new DNA. Right, but it was before the. Uh, it was before you were interviewed by the police that you reached out to the media, didn't it? I'm not sure. It was before they filed their habeas corpus that you reached out to the media, didn't it? I'm not sure. Who reached out to? Did you reach out to the media, or was that Mr. Sampson? or someone else? The media came looking for me. But didn't you call the media? Well, the media came looking for me. I went and got a hold of Mr. Sampson and asked him if he would talk to the media because I was tired of them. You called Jamie Roach, didn't you? Janice, Janice Broach. You I'm called sure. Janice Broach, didn't you? I've called Janice several times. Who was Janice Broach? She's Janice Broach. She's a reporter. For who? Channel 5 in Memphis. Channel 5. Is that one of the networks? A local TV station. Does, do they have a network affiliation like NBC or ABC or Fox? Or? I'm not sure. Seems like they do, but I'm not sure. Okay. And... How many times over the years have you reached out to Miss Broach? I've talked to her a few times. I'm not sure how many. Well, more than five? I imagine. More than ten? I couldn't tell you. How many times have you called her about a story? I'm not sure. Isn't it true, Mr. Hobbs, that prior to the time that the, D that the new DNA results were made public that you called Miss Broach? told her about the results and that you wanted to talk to her about it? I'm not sure about that. You, you did do it though, didn't you? You or somebody on sure. your behalf. I'm not sure. You're not sure? Well, who would know? If Miss Broach testifies to that, you think she's a liar? I like, I trust her. You think she's a So if she said that you did, you think that'd be right? Well, I don't know what she would say, but If someone were to testify that you contacted the media prior to the public release of the DNA in an effort to get your side of the story out on the DNA, would that be a, a lie? I don't know. I don't recall that. Well, did you contact them? Did you contact the media and try to get your side of the story out? I did at one point. When was that? After all this stuff was going on. What stuff are you talking about? They had my DNA supposedly out there and people were looking at me like I was a suspect. That's when I wanted my story out there. And this was before you were interviewed by the police, right? Because the police were responding to all... I'm not sure all, about that. The police were responding to all the, the, the questions and public inquiry about whether or not it was your DNA found in the ligature of that little boy, right? I'm not sure. The police had never told me that it was my 
DNA. Well, didn't the police in the police in a, in, a, in some of the press say that yeah, that it was your it was your DNA, but that it got there by what do they call it, transfer? Okay. Didn't the, didn't, didn't I the can't police accept that? Didn't the police say Objection, that? That's a hearsay statement. Yeah, I'm not sure. You don't recall the police ever saying that yeah, it was your DNA, but it got there via innocent transfer? I do recall the police saying that Mr. Hobbs was not a suspect in '93, and he's not one in '07. Not my question. My question was, do you recall the police saying that it was your DNA, but that it had gotten there through innocent transfer? Well, I don't recall that. And do you recall Mr. Sampson test, uh, not testifying, stating in a question to the to the media that sure it could it could be your DNA, but it would have gotten there through innocent transfer? You recall Mr. Sampson saying that in your presence to the media? I don't remember. I had to ask Ross. Isn't that what happened? What? That it is your hair and it got there through innocent transfer? The police has never told me it was my hair. I, that wasn't my question. I wasn't well, you might need to ask them because I don't know. You think it was your hair? No. Why not? It could have been. I'm not sure. Could have been. Do you know what percentage of the population matched that hair? Seemed like it was one in versus a, two or three million. One in two or three million? I'm just guessing. There were statistics on it. One or two, two or three million match, or one or two in two or three million can be excluded? Well, whichever. Well, there's a big difference, isn't there? I'm not Jackson sure. Jackson lack of foundation. He's not an expert in DNA or statistics. Who, who first told you about the DNA match? Ron Lax. And who was Mr. Lax? He is a, one of the investigators for Damien Eccles. And what did you say when Mr. Lax told you that your DNA was found in the ligature of one of the knots that tied up the I don't remember what I said. I probably cussed him. You don't like him, do you? I don't know him. I've met him through this. You don't like him, do you? I've met him through this. He has, he could have a better attitude. <laughs> Would it be fair to say you're not going to exchange Christmas cards? Exactly. Okay. Do you recall what Mr. Lax told you? Oh, yeah. What did he tell you? What are you going to do when I sick the dogs on you? Meaning, meaning what to you? Ask him. When he told you, what are you going to do when I sick the dogs on you, what did you understand that to be? I wouldn't cooperate with him. I owed him nothing. Not and my question. My question is, what did you understand? He threatened me with the dogs. Now, you might ask him, what are the dogs? And what did you say in response when he threatened you with the dogs? Probably a bad word. Anything else? Probably two bad words. <laughs> <laughs> Just cussed him out and left? Probably. All right. And after, the, after he told you, that's when you called Janice Broach, isn't it? I'm not sure about that time frame. Okay. Let's go back to your lady friend. She also testified that not only did had you found the, the little boys prior to the time that the police did, but that you said that they were buried under water. What did you mean when you said that? Well, you, you pick up on that through the media because the media had put out there that the boys were buried under water. That's the only way we knew that. So you did tell her that the boys were buried underwater? I'm not sure. Well, did you or didn't you? <coughs> I don't know. You think Pam Pam is a good person? I was married to Pam for 17 years. You think she's a good person? I wouldn't have stayed married to her if I didn't think otherwise. Okay. You think she's an honest person? I think she has some problems. It's not my question. People can have, have problems and yet still be honest folks, Mr. Hobbs. My question is, you think she's an honest person? No, not all the time. Okay. You think she's a truthful person? Not all the time. 
When do you think she's not honest and truthful? When she's mad. Okay. She Any other time? Mad. Any other time? Uh, I'm not sure. Was she a good mom to Stevie? Sure. Good mom to Amanda? Sure. I want to ask about a couple, some of the other, uh, let me back up. Do you think that Pam would be honest and truthful in her statements regarding uh, the murders and the involvement of either the West Memphis Three or you in that? Pam has been wishy-washy. She jumped from one side to the other. My question to you, sir, is do you think that she will be an honest and truthful person when it comes to what happened with regard to the West Memphis Three, the murders, and your involvement in the search, or the, all of the actions about the, the event? I think she would be honest. I, I would hope so. You have no reason to think otherwise. Oh yeah, there's reason. There's reasons. <laughs> Just because you depends on what day she gets up. What do you mean by that? If she get up one day thinking one thing, she get up the next day thinking the other. Okay. Mr. Davidson, we have less than two minutes on this tape. Why don't we change the tapes then? We are going off record for a tape change at 11:15 a.m. We are back on record after a tape change at 11.17 a.m. Mr. Hobbs, you still understand you're under oath? I do. All right. Other than, uh, Ms. Nelson, other than the statement about you finding the bodies before the police did, other than that statement, do you believe that she is a, an honest person? After that statement, you don't know what to believe about her. Any other statements that she's made that you think are false? I don't know. I don't know what she, all she's made. Why do you think, why do you think she's, I, mean, I guess your testimony is she's making that up? We talked, you know, about whatever, but when it comes to that, that's fabricated. Okay. So when you say you talked about whatever, you talked about the murders and then the search and all that, I would assume that's something that you talked with with your lady friend about. It's Same. a big part of your life. Okay. I mean, that, is, that, is that fair? That's fair. All right. And when you were talking to your lady friend about it and whatnot, um, why do you think she's making it up? You had to ask her that. Well, that's my, my, I'm asking you. I don't know. You don't know? Who's Marie Hicks? That's Pam's mother. You like her? She was my mother-in-law for 17 years. Yeah, that's a loaded question, but do you like her? I always try to get along with her. All right. You think she's uh, she's an honest lady? Oh, no. Oh, no? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I've done been through that one. What do you mean by that? I've heard that woman lie on me like a dog. What has she said about lying like a dog to, about you about? Uh, in court up there in Blyville. I'm sorry? An ex parte. They, they tried to get an ex parte against my daughter, and they got up in front of that judge and l told some of the biggest lies she ever heard. That's about the allegations that you sexually abused, Amanda? All kind of things. Allegations of that and drug abuse and drug addiction and alcoholic and you know and I'm none of the above. And this was this in the divorce or was this something else? This was before the divorce. Okay, so they made she made she got up and testified at court that you <coughs> had used drugs. Oh yeah, and, and that's a, that's a lie, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And she testified. They was that talking about he's a drug addict. You know, okay. he's not. And you weren't a drug addict. Never have been. What's a drug addict? How do you define a drug addict, Terry? Someone that uses drugs all the time, I guess. All right. I don't know. And she testified that you abused alcohol. Mm hmm Right? Uh-huh. She did. And she testified that you abused abused Amanda, right? Sexually abused Amanda. Well, I don't. I'm not sure about that one, but. I've heard it out of this family. 
Well, there were formal allegations that you sexually abused your daughter, were there not? I know that. And uh, they were brought to brought to court. I don't think they ever been brought to court. Brought to court? No. Well, what do you recall the allegations that the the family made against you about abusing your daughter? What do I recall? Mm hmm. A bunch of junk, garbage, a bunch of stuff they sit around and make up just has something to do. And you never did that? You never abused your daughter? No, sir, I never have. Never did. Someone who I did that? I love my daughter. I love my son. Someone who did that, uh, someone who is a, a child abuser, you would agree, would have a uh, pretty poor reputation in the community, would they not? Excellent calls for legal conclusion. You know, just in your opinion, would someone who is a, a child abuser, would they have a poor reputation in the community? I would think. Okay. And what about someone who uh, is uh, a drug addict? Would they have a bad reputation in the community, Mr. Hawks? I would think. And someone who uses um, cocaine, would they have a bad reputation in the community? You would think. Okay. And uh, someone who uses marijuana, would they have a bad reputation in the community? I have to ask the community. I'm, not well, sure. I'm asking you. I don't know. You you think we're less of someone who uses drugs? I try not to judge people. Okay. What about someone who shot a, a, a brother-in-law with a 357 Magnum in the stomach? They have a bad reputation in the community? No. No? It's okay to go around shooting people in the stomach? No. No? You don't what about know the circumstances. Well, you shot your brother-in-law in the stomach with a 357, didn't you? No, I did not. When you shoot your brother-in-law in the stomach with a gun? No. He was never shot? There was a gun discharged, and no one knew where it went. No one pointed a gun at anybody to shoot somebody well, with. Let's back up here. Uh, your brother-in-law was shot, right, in the stomach? I'm not sure where. Your brother-in-law was shot, though, right? With he a was gun. hit with a, a bullet. And uh, whose gun did the bullet come from? Mine. And who was holding the gun when it went off? I was. And the gun was loaded with hollow point bullets, right? Correct. And you were charged with, you uh, criminal charges were brought against you, right? And soon dropped. Were you ever convicted at all on that? No, sir. No? What, what? We'll come back to that in a little bit, Mr. Hobbs. Who's uh, Jackie Hicks? Well, there was a, a senior and a junior. Okay, what about, I'm talking about senior, I'm sorry. That's Pam's dad. What'd you My think? My ex father in law. What'd you think of him? I respected him. Honest, truthful fellow? Pretty good man. Pretty good man. Mm -hmm. About Jackie Jr.? Boy. Big boy. That's the guy you shot. That's the guy who got shot. You didn't shoot him. That's the guy that got shot. Okay. You know, I'm asking you. Is that the same fella he that is. magically got shot? Okay. He is. Okay. And uh, he's dead now, right? He is. Died of drug overdose. I'm not sure. They said I think one time there was blood clot in his lungs, and I heard of some drug. I don't know really exactly. Okay. Who's JoLynn McCarthy? McCarthy? Who's JoLynn? I don't know. I know a JoLynn, but I don't know her last name. All right. Who's Who's JoLynn? Pam's sister. You and Pam's sister. Older sister, or younger sister. Younger. You guys get along? Probably not. Why not? She's caused a lot of problems in my home, and I didn't appreciate that. How did she cause problems in your home, Mr. Hobbs? Her drug of usage. So she used drugs? Ask her. I'm asking you. You said her drug usage. She used drugs? She was feeding them to my wife, and I did not approve of that. She feed them to you? I tried it with them. I, I didn't like what they were doing, and I, and I tried to run, I run her off over that. What drugs did you try from her or with her? Her crystal. Her crystal. So you did use crystal meth? One time. I have tried it. Okay. I thought, I thought you said earlier you hadn't. I apologize. Mm -mm. 
Is she uh, a truthful and honest person? No, sir. No, sir? Not in my opinion. She got it out for you? She does. Why? She thinks I killed her brother. That'd be Jackie Jr.? Correct. When did Jackie die? I'm not sure. Did she have it out for you before? She thinks I killed her nephew. That'd be Stevie. Yes, sir. Why does she think you killed Stevie? I don't know. Well, you what I do have you to ask her? Why do you understand that she thinks you killed her nephew Stevie? I don't know. She's never told you why you she thinks you killed Stevie? Well, no. I'm sorry? No. I might have heard she thought I didn't like him or something, but I you had to ask her. Okay. Who's Judy Sadler? Pam has a sister named Judy. I don't know her last name. Younger sister, older sister? Younger. You like Judy? I've tried to like them all. They like you? No. Why, do you understand why not? They think I killed her brother. Jackie Jr., they also think you killed Stevie, don't they? They do. I've heard that. In fact, they've been pretty vocal in the press about that, haven't they? I've heard that. I'm sorry? I have heard that. And they've been pretty vocal about that in the press for a couple of years, haven't they? They have. And you've had to defend yourself in the press and the media for a couple of years about the, the Hicks family thinking you killed Stevie, haven't you? The Hicks and others. The Hicks and others. For a couple of years, you've had to defend yourself about being the murderer or one of the murderers. Isn't that right? I have. And this DNA and everything that's come up in the last couple of years, that's just, that's just on top of it. It's just new proof or allegations about the same thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yes. you have to answer out loud. You have to answer out loud, sir. Yes. Yes. A lot of people have drugged my name into it over this. Uh, and that's been, <clears throat> that's been really since shortly after the convictions, right? The Paradise Lost 2 came out and raised all kinds of questions about who the right, you know, none who the about, murderers were. None and, about me. None about me. Well, when, did, when did you start to get in the, in the press, sir, and having to defend yourself about allegations that you were the murderer or one of the murderers? <coughs> if, if I had said anything, it was then, within the past couple years. Past oh. couple years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's Paula Hicks? Another sister? Pam's sister. Younger or older? Younger. Honest, you like, honest, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you like her? You like Paula? I, I try to like them all. Try to like them all. They like you? Does she no. like you? No. Because she thinks she killed Jackie St. Jr. Or, and also Stevie, right? I guess. Well, I mean, that's what, that's what they've told you, right? That's what I've heard. And that's what they've told the press, right? Mm-hmm. I don't, answer know out loud. Paula, I don't know if Paula has said it to the press, but I've heard it amongst the family. And you've heard it in the community, right? Well, not really in the community. I've just heard it on TV, newspapers. And that's over the last several years? No. No? Last couple years. Last couple years. When you say couple, when Two. do you mean? I think it's all started in 07. When the when the DNA yeah, my, came out exactly, and at that point, it, it, everything just piled on top of one another, didn't it? Yep. Yep. David Jacoby, good friend of yours. He still is. You like him? I always have. Honest fellow. He seems to be. Truthful fellow. Seems to be. Do you have any reason to lie about? Not on me. Not on you? And I don't know about anything else. Okay. Have you talked to him about this lawsuit? I probably have. Okay. You promised him any money? No. No? You hadn't said I'm going to give you some money when I get all this money from the Dixie Chicks? Not one time. Not one time? No. What about anybody from the from Pam's side of the family. You have promised anybody from Pam's side of the family a bunch of money? No. No? No. 
So if somebody testifies to that fact that you said that you would give them or their trusts or foundations money, they'd be lying. I've told Pam over the years that I'd always wanted to see her do her mommy thing. What do you mean mommy thing? Well, it's an organization that we put together for Pam that she really put together. So you did tell Pam that? No. You, so you didn't tell Pam you'd give her any money for no. her foundation? Out of any I would always, out. I've always told her in the past, I'd like to help you get this going. That's my, my, not my question, Mr. Hobbs. My question the answer is, is no. You've never told Pam Hobbs you would give her or her foundation money from any settlement or judgment that came out of this? Correct. And if she testified otherwise, she'd be lying? Correct. You talked to David Jacoby about the allegations in this lawsuit? Such as? The fact you're suing the Dixie Chicks or Natalie Maines and what you're suing them over? You can't help but read it in the paper and see it on the news. Right, because your attorney issued a press release right the day it was filed, right? I'm not sure. Well, you knew that, right? Seemed like you did. He's sitting right there. Well, I'm asking you. You knew, you knew he was going to file a press release the day it was filed, right? No, I did not. Didn't you didn't talk about it? No, I don't believe we did. Okay. You talked to David about what his testimony will be if and when he's deposed? No. No. What about Bobby Jacoby? That's David's wife. Right. Like her? Nice lady? I hadn't seen Bobby in ten years probably. Honest lady? I don't know. Think she'd be truthful and honest about the events surrounding this lawsuit and the West Memphis I don't three say murders. Why not? Okay. John Mark Byers, you don't like him much, do you? I don't have nothing to do with him. Not my question. The question is, you don't like him much? Can't do you? stand him. Why? For the stuff he did. What he did. A lot of things. Tell me. Uh, get on Larry King Live. Call me a killer. Get on local TV and call me a killer. Get in the newspapers and call me a killer. And you're not a killer, are you? No, sir. Okay. Where, how's the, where did you file the lawsuit against Mr. Byers? Well, that's probably in coming up in 2012, because I've never filed a lawsuit against Mr. Byers. Well, why not? Uh, he might be on the list, but we've never done that yet. Okay. Have you talked to Mr. Byers? You said, John Mark, you got it wrong. I didn't do this? No. Well, why not? Because he knows better. Knows better to talk to you? He knows that I didn't have nothing to do with this. Why is he saying it then? Ask him. Oh, man, why do you think he's saying it? If he, if he knows you didn't have anything to do with it, why is he saying it? I would it? think anybody that brings my name up in this manner has an issue upstairs. I mean, a little crazy? Something. So I, I take it you don't think he was uh, honest and he's, he's an honest and truthful fellow? No, sir. You think he was involved in the murders at all? No. No. There was a point in time when folks thought he did it, didn't he? Or was involved. I don't know. I don't know. Did you ever, did you ever question whether or not he was involved in the murders? No. No? Now, you say you know that, that at some point folks thought he was involved. Why do you say that? Because they were. Well, how do you, how do you know that? They that come up in the trials. Came up in the trials? Came up after the trials, too, didn't it? In both places. Came up in the in during the, the trials and after. Came up in the uh, HBO documentary. Came up in the, some of the books too. Right. How many books have been written about these murders? I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, half a dozen. I'm not sure. Have you read any of them? Uh, I read some of the Devil's Knot, but no, I haven't read. 
more than in a piece of just that book. What part of the Devil's Knot did you read? I don't know. Just starting at the front, read some of it, and toss it in the trash. You don't own it. You don't have any of the books. You don't own any of the books. No. Have you sued any of the publishers or or authors of those books? We put a stop to one during the trials that Commercial Appeal newspaper started. Uh, they were taking our story and they made a book about it. We put a stop to that. Because they weren't authorized, right? Correct. They hadn't paid you for it. It wasn't about the payment. It was about they done it the way they done it. What do you mean by that? We just asked them, sneaking around, doing things wrong. L such as? Doing it without your consent. Okay. Taking your story and trying to capitalize on it. They didn't have a con an agreement like the Dimension Films Agreement. Right. You read uh, The Blood of Innocence? You read that book? No, I had. You know when that book was published? No, sir. You read, uh, you said The Devil's Not, you read that? Just a little bit of it. When do you recall reading that? I'm not sure when. You recall how much you read? Nope. You know when this was published? No. Did you read the book, The Last Pentacle of the Sun? No, I haven't. You know when this was published? No. Did you read uh, the book, Almost Home, My Life Story, by Damien Eccles? No. You know when it was published? No, I don't. You read any of the other books that are out there about this? No, I haven't. Okay. No interest? Correct. stickers. Yeah, just, just the ones. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Mr. Hobbs, let me hand you what's been marked as Deposition Exhibit 1, which is a deposition notice of you in this case, and ask if you've seen that document before. seen that document before, Mr. Holmes? I have. You have? When did you first see it? I believe. See it yesterday when you were getting ready for your deposition? Is that one of the documents? Oh, no. I don't think I've seen this one. You hadn't seen this one before? Well, I hang on just a minute. Deposition, Exhibit 1. No, I don't think I've seen this one yet. Okay. This is just a, a, a pleading that was forwarded to your counsel setting up the deposition here today. Okay. But at the very bottom, you're asked to bring documents with you that have not previously been produced that are responsive to my client's first set of document requests or interrogatories. And my simple, my sole question to you, sir, did you bring any documents with you today? No. Okay. Do you know of any documents, Mr. Hobbs, that uh, you have that are responsive to the, doc to the discovery requests that have not been produced? Objection calls for legal conclusion. Just asking if you know of any documents that you have related to this dispute that hadn't been produced. No. Would it be fair to say that every document that you have related to this dispute you've given to your lawyers and what they've done with it, you still know? When I do have, uh, uh, and they know about it, I just hadn't give it to them. What's that? A couple that? police reports I've had to file here within the past couple months on people, and one of them's an intimidation report. Uh, who did you file the police reports against? Uh, some man from Australia come in threatening me with the Dixie Chicks. What do you mean? What happened? Explain to me what happened. I need to read the report. 
Well, I'm asking you, sir, since you didn't bring the report. Well, I don't, I don't recall exactly what it says, but you can get a copy of it and you can read it. I'd like you to tell me what you recall happened that, that resulted in you filing a complaint against some Australian fellow. The way he, they done it, come to our job posing as a tourist, carrying cameras in their pockets, hidden asking for permission to walk around and take pictures of a country looking lumberyard. Got their permission. Once they singled me out and found me, start filming me and telling me the Dixie Chicks are going to get you and we hear that you're going to get a piece of them. I asked the man, young man to leave the premises. I went down and filed a police report to this fact. When did this happen? A couple of months ago, maybe two or three months. Did you recall the gentleman's name? Stu. That's the only he told everybody his name was Stu. Okay. Did, did, did he leave when you asked him to leave? It was two of them. And they eventually left, but not right then. How long were they on the premises? I'm not sure. Half, 10 minutes? 15 minutes? 5 Pro minutes? Probably. Probably 15 less? 15 or longer. Okay. How long before you asked them to leave? Once I figured out what they were up to. And how long did that take? Well, they'd walked around. They'd been there 10 minutes before they found me. So they found you? 10 or 15 minutes before they found me. Do you have any reason to believe that Miss Pazar or the Dixie Chicks were behind that? Or is that just some lack of better work? Crazy what fellow? happened, happened. I don't know who's behind it. What happened, happened. Okay. And what have the police done? follow up on that. Anything? I couldn't tell you. Have you had any communications with the fellow since? No, I think he took back off to Australia. Have you seen him since? No. No. Um, who else witnessed this? About eight or nine other people at work. Okay. Are they all in the listed in the police report? Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. What other? You said you, a couple reports or is that the only one? There's another one. All right. Tell me what happened there, Mr. Hobbs. There was a investigator from New York out here investigating, and I don't really remember uh, other than that when we tell him to leave. He calls me outside and says a bunch of stuff. He don't believe that the boys killed him. That's in prison, and he's telling me all this stuff. And I look at him. I said, I really don't care what you had to say. You convinced the judge, the jury, the prosecutor, the DA, and the investigators on this, and then you can come back and talk to me. Was this someone who was a private, your understanding was a private citizen, or was this someone associated with? A private with, investigator, hired by Lori Davis. How, hired by Lori Davis, okay. What Which happened? Is Damien Eccles' wife. Yes, sir. When did this happen? After the Stu incident. And so this was within the last month or so? The last couple of months, two or three months ago. Okay. And do you know, has there been any follow-up with regard with the police on that? I'm not sure. Do you have any reason to believe the Dixie Chicks or Miss Pazdar were involved in that at all? I don't know any. I'm sorry? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Any other reports? No, not okay. that I know of. Okay. Who would ask for those reports, Cody? Let me hand you what's been marked as Exhibit 2, Mr. Hobbs, which is a copy of the lawsuit that you caused to be filed against Ms. Pastor and the Dixie Chicks and ask if you've seen that document. Too. I have. When was the first time you saw it? Well, we sat down and put it together. Right. And who's the we? My attorneys. Cody? And Mr. Ted. I'm sorry? Both of my attorneys. Both of your attorneys. Did you look at drafts of it? Or was it presented to you? Here it is. Let's go.
My question is, did you did you see drafts of it before it was filed? Mm. Sorry. You did not. You well, I've seen it before it was filed. All right. When you saw it, did you read through it and make sure it was true and correct? I did. Did you make any changes to it? As you as it had been drafted? I'm not. I don't, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? Um, is everything in this complaint, to your knowledge, true and correct, sir? Objection calls for a legal conclusion. Just asking, to your knowledge, you aware of anything in here that's that's not right? Mm -mm. No. Yeah, no. And you so you stand by everything, factually, that's alleged in this complaint. I do. You do. And you authorized it to be filed. I did. And you were okay with your lawyer issuing a press release about the filing. I wasn't aware of that, but I'm okay with it. You're okay with it. All right. I'm going to go through a couple things in here, Mr. Hobbs. On um, paragraph one, it says you're a resident of Memphis, Tennessee, and you've lived in Memphis, Tennessee for a number, number of years, have you not? I have. And you work in Memphis, Tennessee. I have. And your 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 circle of friends are in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, not only that, but I the there are some. The majority of your friends are there. Okay. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, is that is that yes? Yes, I right. guess. And any harm that would be, have been caused or suffered by you as a result of things that are in the complaint would have uh, you would have suffered in Tennessee. Correct. Objection calls for legal conclusion. Still answer. No, my name was spread all around Arkansas, mm -hmm. all around the country, mm -hmm. all around the world mm -hmm. by a group of near mine. By a group of, I'm sorry? Near mine. Near mine? Who's the, what's the group? Is that the West Memphis 3 website? And it's everybody involved. Which would be the West Memphis 3 web? The Even your client, sir. Even my client, okay, but it would be the West Memphis Three. It'd be the internet. It would be the, it would be uh, where this Lori. was found. It would be the. Seem like the defense this right team. here was found on the internet too. Right, and you read it when you read it. You read it. You were in Tennessee, right? Uh, probably. Yeah. All right. Why'd you sue in Arkansas? Uh, my case originated in Arkansas. How so? Uh, the murders of our children. So the case really revol evolves all the way back to the murders, correct? It, it started in Arkansas. And it's been continuous. I've had attorneys tell me in Tennessee, your fight is in Arkansas, take it to Arkansas. Who sold you that? Attorneys in Tennessee. What attorneys? I couldn't tell you. When but, did they tell so you? So I have done this. When did they tell you? When I talked to them about it. When? So I had, I don't know when, so I have done that. I've taken it back across the river to Arkansas, where I'm a native of. Okay. And so just so I understand, so the, your fight is in Arkansas because the murders were in Arkansas. And everything else that's happened. Is, you know, your client coming to our state and bashing my name, throwing right. my name around. And that's the rally? Yeah, part of it. And when else has my client, Miss Pazdar, been to Arkansas and well, bashed your name around? Well, she done it there, and then she goes home and does it on her internet. Okay, well, I'm talking about when she comes to Arkansas. Okay, well, she did. It's the rally. Okay. Is that the only thing you're complaining about, right? Is about in Arkansas is, is the rally. Some, that calls for a legal conclusion. No, it doesn't. Answer the question. Sure it does. You can't cut off your liability for something that they did based on what he says. I'm not talking about liability, Ted. I'm talking about the underlying facts that form the basis of the claim. The only facts in Arkansas that form the basis of the claim it, that touch the state of Arkansas is her appearance at the rally, right? I'm not Same sure. objection. Right? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Well, other than the rally and the murders and the fact that the um, habeas corpus filings were made here in the state of Arkansas. 
what other contacts with the state of Arkansas arise out of your suit, sir? Can you think Action of any? Calls for legal conclusion. Just ask them for facts. No, I'm not sure. Okay. You're aware that the appeals of the West Memphis Three are still ongoing, correct? I am. Okay. So when you say that in paragraph 11 of the complaint that they haven't been reversed on direct appeal, the appeals are still open and ongoing, correct? Jackson calls for legal conclusion. He doesn't know what an appeal is, a direct appeal, or a habeas corpus is. You can answer the question, Mr. Hobbs. Well, I don't know if they're ongoing or not. Seemed like I thought they was over. You thought they were over? Yeah. Why do you think that? Because they just had their appeals, and they were all denied again. Okay. There was some point when you got to quit this. Okay. You would agree with me. Are you aware that, uh, if I could turn, let me show you, make it a little easier here, try to get through this a little faster here. In paragraph 12. You state that Damian Eccles has been unsuccessful in seeking a retrial based on what he has characterized as new DNA evidence believed to be sufficient to cast doubt on his conviction. What did you, what did you understand? What do you mean when you say that? Objection. Quoting a pleading is not necessarily his statement. It's a statement made on his behalf. He's not required to parse legal documents for you. Not asking him to parse. I'm just asking what he meant when he said that. That's what parsing is. Just read it. You've got a little more education than him. You can answer the question, Mr. Hobbs. No, I'm not going to answer it. Why not? Because of my attorneys. Well, you, you can answer. He hasn't instructed the best. you not to answer. He'll, to the best your ability. He'll tell you when. Trust me. He's a good lawyer. He, he'll tell you when not to answer my questions. So my question is, what do you mean when you said that? Uh, that he doesn't think that the evidence has anything to do with him, it's, and it belongs to somebody else. Well, you, you understand from all of the press and all of your dealings that none of the defendants, the West Memphis Three defendants' DNA, were found on any of the victims, were they? Correct. Correct. The only DNA that was found was DNA that is has been publicly linked to you and or Mr. Jacoby. Isn't that right? Objection like foundation. Yeah. Well, you, know, you understand from reading the press and talking to believe, the police? No, and the police has never told me that was your hair. But they said it's linked to you. They can't They said it you, could be they? one of. Right, and, and the percentage of, of folks that would be that would be matched is... And if it was my like hair... Foundation I'm sorry? If it was my hair... Right. I raised that boy. You, ra you raised Stevie? I did. Right. And so, possible is your hair, but it just got there because Stevie was in your house all the time, right? Well, he lived with me. He lived with you. Matter of fact, that's what Mr. Sampson said in the public, isn't it? Well, it could be his. I mean, we're not saying it's not because it could be transfer, and he was, Stevie lived at the house all the time, right? Mm hmm. You had to answer out loud. Yes. Right. And you authorized Mr. Sampson. Said, Mr. You know, you said, Mr. Sampson, we need to, we need to get this message out. That's what we need to tell folks, right? Right. And you've never publicly denied that it's your hair, have you? I've never been convinced it was my hair. Right. And yes, I've had said I don't believe it was my hair. Okay. Now why do you say that? Because I don't believe it was my hair. Well, if it was, I don't care. You don't care if it was your hair, because Stevie was at your house all the time. He was my stepson. Right. How do you explain Mr. Jacoby's DNA being found? I don't have no explanation for that. The objection to the mm. characterization of it is his DNA. How do you explain the DNA that's been connected with Mr. Jacoby being found at the crime scene? I have no explanation. Okay. Because Mr. Jacoby, <coughs> at least as far as come out so far, was never at the crime scene, so his DNA could never get there, right? I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and you spent, I mean, we went over this a lot this morning. You spent a lot of time with Mr. Jacoby that day, right? That afternoon and evening we did. And through, looking, the, through the night. Looking for the boys. Yes, sir. Getting out of the car. Mm -hmm. Walking yes. around the woods. We did. Now, do you, ha do you have an explanation for how the DNA that's been associated with you ended up not in Stevie's ligature, but Michael Moore's ligature? I could understand, perhaps, innocent transfer if it was in Stevie's, if it's in the knots. Have you ever it tied heard of Stevie's? Secondary let me transfer? let me answer. Let me answer. Remember we talked about it earlier. Let me finish my question, then you get okay. to answer. Objection, argumentative. You ask the question. Door. Don't get in his face. You're I'm, not asking, I'm not asking. I'm well, not asking. I'm not insist. I'm just simply trying to say, can you explain to me, sir, how secondary transfer could get from you to the knots in the shoestrings that tied? Little Mikey Moore's hands and feet behind him. Objection Michael. assumes facts not in evidence because it assumes that the shoestrings on the boy were the shoestrings used to tie the boy, which has not been established. So the shoe, okay. So the shoestrings, you'll agree with me that the DNA that's been associated with you was found in the knot. That tied the shoestrings of Mikey Moore, right? Michael Moore, correct? Objection to the characterization of found in a knot. A ligature. Or a ligature. <laughs> <laughs> there's, you, there's no proof you that that's ask, happened. So if you want to assume hypothetically that it was in a ask, knot, then you can react to your assumption. Answer the question, Mr. Hahn. I'm not going to agree with you. Well, I'm just asking you how you can explain how the DNA that's been associated with you was found in the ligature of the shoestrings that tied Michael Moore. And I object on the basis of there's no factual, there's no foundation of this witness's personal knowledge as to where the hair was found. You can the shoestring it was found. You can answer the question, Mr. Moore. Can you explain it to the Mr. judge? Mr. Hobbs. I'm sorry, I, I apologize. I apologize very much. Mr. Hobbs, can you explain to the judge and jury how that happened? No, I had no explanation for that. Can you explain, and you can't explain to the judge and jury how the DNA associated with Mr. Jacoby was found at the crime scene? No, I don't Objection believe Objection for the same basis. I understand. He doesn't have the factual, you haven't established you, you know the foundation. What? You've, you've, got, you've, you've made your objection. Objection is form, and let's be quiet and not coach the witness, okay? I'm not coaching the witness. Yeah, you are. Objected, you know, the rules say If I was coaching the witness, I'd say there was 7% <laughs> of the you population know what? We're gonna stop. hasn't been excluded from Mr. You know what? Jacoby. You wanna, so one of us can't be excluded from you Mr. Wanna, Jacoby. You want to keep going on this? No, I don't. Okay. Then follow the rules. I'm Thank following you. the rules. No, you're not. And you're asking questions that he doesn't have a foundation of knowledge to answer them. He has no in personal paragraph, knowledge. In paragraph 13, Mr. Hobbs, you say that uh, the case involving... West Memphis III has attracted national attention focused on the sufficiency of the evidence used in achieving the convictions. What did you mean when you said attracted national attention? Objection, you haven't established the fact that he said it. He looked at the complaint, reviewed it, approved it, and authorized it to be filed. These are his words, these are his complaints against my client, and I think I'm entitled to understand what he meant when he said that the case has attracted national attention. There so fine, if you want an objection as to form, object as to mm -hmm. form, otherwise let's be quiet mm -hmm. and not coach the witness, or we're going to get on the phone I and have, call the judge. I have objected as to form All right, because well he's then, not required to parse legal terminology in pleadings. You can answer the question, Mr. Hobbs. All right, let's read the question again. What did you mean in paragraph 13 when you said the case has attracted national attention? Well, it has. Why do you say that? Because it's drawn a lot of attention, and it really has. It's brought in HBO. It's brought in the Dixie Chicks. It's brought in other uh, people out there who has doubts, you know, and that's their issues, not mine. 
when did the case start to draw national attention? From the get-go? Probably. What celebrities are you aware of that have taken up the cause of the West Memphis Three, in addition to Miss Pazdar? No, oh, I mean, I've heard of some Johnny Depp. I've heard of his name. I've heard of Will Ferrell's name. Uh, and I'm not sure of, you know, how many others have, but you hear names from time to time. People see them wearing the Free the West Memphis Three t-shirts, sweatshirts. You hear that. There's bumper stickers on cars all over town. Sure. In fact, I saw one driving in this morning. Free the WM3. They flew an airplane over Little Rock mm -hmm. one time with a banner behind it. You wear the Pearl Jam lead singers taking up the cause? I've heard of that. Wyona Riders taking up the cause? Oh, well. Metallica is taking up the cause? Oh, well. Oh well? Oh well. What do you mean by oh well? I could care less. Okay. But you would agree that it is a, um, a well-known and controversial issue, right? In Jack, some people's mind. And it has been a well-known and controversial issue for a number of years. As a matter of fact, sh from shortly after the convictions were announced, correct? In some people's mind. Right. I think there was a jury of 12 people that seen through all the BS and give them what they deserved. When did you first become aware of the letter that Ms. Pazdar posted on the website? I don't have a date. Do you? It, the letter was is dated November the 26th, 2007. And my question to you, Mr. Hobbs, is when, how shortly after that time did you become aware of that? I'm not sure. Within a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple I'm months? I'm not sure. I've had a lot of people call me up and say, don't look. You ain't going to believe this. Who called you? Don't, don't look about the letter or just about everything that's on the Internet? All the above. Okay. Who called? Including your letter. Who called, it's not my letter, Who Miss Pazdar's letter. Who called and told you about Miss Pazdar's letter? Family and friends. Who? Family. What family? Brothers. I got two brothers. Okay. And they live on that internet. Which, uh, what are your brothers' names? Mike and Joe Jr. Okay, and where does Mike live? Mountain Home, Arkansas. Okay, you have an address for him? I don't. Telephone number? I do. What's his telephone number? 870. I had to look it up. Okay. If I leave a blank in the deposition, will you agree to fill that in, that telephone number? I doubt it, but I'll see what we can do. All right. And how about your other brother? What's his name? Joe Hobbs, Jr. Okay. Where's, where's Joe Hobbs, Jr. live? Hardy, Arkansas. All right. you, you, you know what street he lives on? No, I don't. You know his telephone number? I had to look it up. Uh, and so one of your brothers called and told you about Miss Pazdar's letter? Probably both of them. Both of them? Do you, and you don't recall when? No. What would they tell you about the letter? Don't look. You ain't going to believe what this is saying about you. Okay. And did you look anyway? I had. All right. When did you look? I'm not sure. Did you look? I mean, do you even have, do you have the Internet? I've had it all uh, for years. Okay. And so did you look at the Internet? Did you look at the, the website? With the, with the posting at sometime shortly after your brothers let you know about it? Sure. Sure. Um, nothing new in that letter other than it came from Ms. Pazdar, was there? I object is um, to the extent that it requires a legal conclusion. No, no new allegations in that letter other than the fact that who signed it, right? <laughs> well, they didn't have to do that. Well, that's not my question. My question is there was nothing new in the letter other than the fact that it came from Natalie Pastor, right? That's something that she didn't have to do, but she chose to do it. I appreciate that. 
I appreciate that she didn't have to do it and that she chose she to write took the my letter. name and run with it like the rest of them have. Mr. Ho Mr. Hobbs, can you answer my question, which is? I don't care. You don't care about answering my question? I'm uh, getting that way. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, we're going to keep asking it until I get an answer, which is there was nothing new in that letter that hadn't been said time and time again other than the fact that Ms. Pazdar signed it. Isn't that right? Objection to the form of the question That's fine. because it assumes that. You know what? You just object again to form. and again. No, I have to state the basis for my objection. Only if I ask for it. Only if I ask for the basis. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. So my question, sir, is can you answer? Would you answer my question? What was your question? Can you read it back? <clears throat> what did it start with? You know what? I'll ask. Back. Yeah, a couple back, just that there, that there was nothing new. There was also a characterization of how many times that it had been previously stated that was different from the previous question. You know what, let me, if it's easier, I'll just ask it again. That's fine. Mr. Hobbs, you would agree with me that nothing in Ms. Pazdar's letter was new other than the fact that it came from her, came from Natalie Maines. That's what made it new. It Correct. Was. Correct. Everything else. She got in our business when she shouldn't have. Everything else, all of the allegations, all of the statements, not allegations, all of the statements that are in there had been said many times in the press before, hadn't it? Right. Okay. And it had been said in the national press many times before, right? Celebrities tend to draw a different crowd. Okay. But my question is, is, is though those same facts, those same statements had been made in the national press many times before? Probably had they not? so. Well, they had, hadn't probably they? Probably so. Probably so. And you had been having to deal with the effects of those statements for many months prior to the time Ms. Pazdar made her letter, had you not? Okay. Well, no. Is that a yes or That's no? It's a yes. It's a yes. And what is she the type to when someone's down, kick them down a little, little bit lower, put their foot on or smash them down? Is that what you think she did? Exactly. <clears throat> she can stay in Texas and mind her own business. What else? No, I have nothing else to say. Nothing else to say? Okay. When you found out about the letter that was posted on the website, Ms. Pazdor's letter, what'd you do? Got more, a little more mad about it. Okay. Just because it's one more, one more celebrity that's trying to get him a new trial. Taking cheap shots at me. What was a cheap shot? What, what in the letter? And the letter's attached. I've read the letter. Right. Well, I want you to point out. Mention me. my name about anything. I'm sorry? Cheap shot. Mention my name about anything. All right. No matter if it's been done a million times. Tell that woman, mind her own business. What else you want to say? That's it. Okay. How many times does your name appear in this letter? I don't remember. What in here is a cheap shot? What in exhibit, it's an exhibit A to your complaint. What in there is a cheap shot? My name being in there at all. So she just, she, to your, to, you don't think she had the right to, to bring your name, to bring your name or get involved in the, in this, in this d debate? Exactly. Why didn't she have the right to get involved in the debate, Mr. Hobbs? Who give her the right? Objection calls for legal conclusion.
What is your under, do you have an understanding of the First Amendment? Sure. What is what is your understanding of the First Amendment of the Constitution? Free speech. Okay. What does that mean to you? That people can shoot off if they want to. Okay. Was Miss Pazdar exercising her First Amendment rights when she sent this letter? Objection calls for legal conclusion. Just asking your I'm not asking for a legal opinion. I'm asking for your opinion. Was Miss Pazdar exercising her right? First Amendment right to freedom of speech. Without merit. Without merit. But she was exercising her right. Without merit. She has the right to say that she thinks that they're entitled to a new trial. She can say that, can't she? She can say anything she wants. Okay. But if, be sure you can back it up. If she simply said, I think that the West Memphis Three are entitled to a new trial, is she entitled to say that? Sure. Does she? Does she do you think that she has done anything wrong to you if she says that? Humiliation. If she just says, I think the West Memphis Three got a raw deal and need a new trial, that's humiliation I think to that's kind of wrong to say, but people shoot off stuff like it all the time. I mean, that's been going on for 19, almost 18 years, hasn't it? Or not 18, it's 16 years. Yeah, it's been going on a while. 16 years people have been saying they got a raw deal and they need a new trial. They did. They have. And there's nothing wrong with Ms. Hobbs advocating for people to donate money to the West Memphis Three Fund, is there? Sure. Well, there, there is something wrong with that? Yeah. What's wrong with that? I wouldn't think that you should do something like that. You shouldn't say you can exercise your, your rights, in, in, rights in America and donate money to a cause that you believe in? She don't believe in that cause. Well, hold on. Why do you say that Ms. Pazdar doesn't believe in this You cause? said Ms. Hobbs. I'm sorry. Did I say Ms. Hobbs? You did. I apologize. I meant Ms. Pazdar. Well. Can Ms. Pazdar, is there anything wrong with Ms. Pazdar? Well, there is no. Well, I guess Ms. Hobbs would be Amanda, right? No, Pam's still a Hobbs. Pam, Pam, well, <coughs> Pam sure as heck thinks she did it, didn't, doesn't she? Think who did what? She thinks she killed Stevie. She thinks who killed Stevie? You. No. She doesn't think that? No. She doesn't think you were involved? No. She, and, if she and, and, and if she testified to that fact, what would you say? Pam, you know better than that. And what if she says, yeah, I know you, Terry, and I think you did it? She ain't going to tell you that. Really? She ain't going to tell somebody that. What about uh, if uh, Amanda says that? Amanda ain't going to say something like that. What about if the whole, Amanda's whole side of the family says that? Pam's side? I'm sorry, Pam's side. They will say something like that. And Mark Byers will say that, won't he? Uh -huh. and a he lot has. of people, a, a lot of people say that, won't they? They have. They have, and they've been saying that for well prior to the time that Miss Pazdar posted her letter on the internet in November of '07, haven't they? The louder the. Uh, my question about how loud. My question is, they've been saying it for a long time prior to Miss Pazdar putting the letter on the internet. Right? It has happened. Right. And they've been saying that a long time prior to the rally in our, on the courthouse steps in Arkansas, right? The state it has steps. happened. Well, it has happened. It happened a long time prior to the rally on the. Not with my name. My name came up the same year of the rally. Right. And your name was never mentioned at the rally, was it? I wasn't there. Well, you sure as heck sued on it. Well, she needs to stay in Texas. She just needs to stay in Texas. Mind her own business. Mind her own business. That's not my question. My question is, your name was not mentioned one time at the rally in Arkansas, was it? No, but read between the lines, sir. Objection like the foundation. What, what between the lines, Mr. Hobbs, about what was said at the rally? I don't remember what was at the rally. Oh, I got a transcript of the rally. You want to, you want to see it? No, nah, I don't. Well, then tell me what was said at the rally. Read between know. the lines that you think causes you harm. Protection like foundation, personal knowledge as to what happened at the rally. He sued on it. Tell me about it. What was said at the rally that you're complaining about? I wasn't there. Well, you, we testify, you testified earlier that the rally is one of the basis, one of the two bases of the lawsuit, right? The letter and the rally. And what she said at the rally you think uh, caused you damage Read and it you to want us. to humiliate her. Read it to us. Let's go off the record. Change tapes.
We are going off record for a tape change at 12.16 p.m. We are back on record after a tape change at 12.18 p.m. Thank you. Mr. Hobbs, you understand you're still under oath, and your testimony today has, still has the same force and effect as though you were testifying in front of the judge and the jury, correct? I do. All right. Now, you didn't attend the rally, did you? No, I did not. Did you? Uh, how'd you find out about it, that Ms. Pazdar was there? It was all over the news. All over the news. Did you, have you gone to the Internet and watched the, the, the speech? No. No. Uh, when it was on the news, what did what do you? I might have seen it on the TV, but I didn't go to the internet. Well, they didn't show the whole. They didn't show her whole statement, even though it was pretty short. They didn't show the whole thing on the TV, did they? Just a little blurb. Right. Probably. I mean, we've 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 seen the TV excerpts. And I think they've been produced and stipulated to you. I mean, okay. You've seen all the stipulations, right? Probably. I mean, the stip let me back up here. That's a good question. Have you seen the four stipulations that have been entered in this case? Has been? Entered in this case. There are four stipulations. I can show them to you, but they're, they're pretty thick down here. But the four stipulations that have been entered by the parties in this case, have you seen that? Mm -mm. You have to answer out loud. I don't think so. Did, uh, have you reviewed all of the the newspaper articles and whatnot that have been exchanged between the parties, newspaper articles, magazine articles, TV reports, uh, internet articles about the case in the West Memphis Three. Have you, have you reviewed those? I have kept up with several of them. Okay. Of the, st of the statements that, of the articles that are contained in any of the four stipulations, you're not aware of any statement attributed to you in which you're misquoted, are you? Objectives to form like foundation. Still get the answer to you, Mr. Hobbs. You're not aware of any of the art of any of the documents or exhibits that form the basis of stipulation one, two, three, or four, where you're misquoted, are you? No, I'm not Same sure. Okay. I'm sorry. You said you're not aware, correct? Correct. And as far and so we can. As far as uh, this lawsuit is concerned, uh, you believe that you were, in fact, accurately quoted in the articles that are attached as exhibits to the four stipulations. Is Objectives that correct? Objectives to form like a foundation. I'm not sure. Okay. But you're certainly not aware where you were misquoted. Well, I'm sure that's happened. Well, where do you recall being misquoted? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I wouldn't doubt if there's misquotations out there. All right, well, then I guess we'll, we'll go through the, the exhibits later, and we'll see if you can see where you are misquoted, um, or if you were. So how did you find out about the rally? You found out because it was on the, on the TV, right? And a reporter called me. Who called you? Ms. Janice Roach. The same one you called about the DNA earlier in the year? I've talked to Janice millions of times. How many times do you call her as opposed to she calls you? I don't know. I mean, you call her as many times as she calls you? Well, we don't call each other on a regular basis, no. But when there's something something new... Back during all these allegations, I talked to Janice. Okay. Matter of fact, Janice, that's the same one we talked about earlier this morning when you called her in the spring to let her know about the DNA results, right? I'm not sure. I mean, that's the same Janice, right? Janice Broach, Channel 5, Memphis, Tennessee. Right. You said, wh why have you talked to her a million times? Because I can, because I want to. And then she takes your calls? Sure. She takes your calls because this is kind of an ongoing story? Probably. Okay. And she returns my calls if I need her to. Okay. What, did, uh, what do you recall Janice, you and Janice talking about? The, the day of the rally? She called me up and wanted to know if I was in the rally because she heard that I was. Was this before the rally took place? During right? the rally. It sounded like she was there at the time. Okay. She was there. All right. And obviously you were. Correct. She's got, did she call you on a cell or did she call you at home? I was on, I have a cell phone. How long have you had a cell phone? Ten years probably. 
Did you have a cell phone back in 93? I don't think so. Okay. I think they were pretty new back then. <coughs> yeah, it was probably coming out then. Yeah. Um, did you, after the rally, well, let me back up. When she called you, any, any other conversations other than Janice asking if you were at the rally? Uh, not about the rally. She called me from the rally that day. What did you, what did you guys talk about? She asked me if I was here at the rally. She said, I, someone said they spotted you. And I said, no, Janice, I'm at work. What else did y'all talk about? Talk about the DNA results? I don't remember. Talk about what Ms. Pazdar was saying? Probably. What? I don't remember what was said, but it was at that rally that she called me. Okay. Did you ultimately, did you subsequently review what was said at the rally by Ms. Pazdar? In the papers. In the papers. Anywhere, anywhere else? Probably on TV. TV. Anywhere else? Maybe in the magazines. What magazines? Whatever magazines printed them. Time magazine had a piece in there about it. Uh, probably others. I don't remember. Okay. So Time had an article about the rally. I believe it did. Yes. CNN cover it. Well, it was all over the airways again. Okay. It was all about the the court filings that uh, Damien's not Damien's that uh, that the West Memphis Three had filed though, right? That's what was all over the airways, the new the new evidence, the, the DNA filings. Evidence. I mean, that's what it was. That's what was being covered. It wasn't the, the rally where Natalie spoke for three minutes, was it? Yeah, it was there. It was on the news. It was mentioned, but the, the focus of the CNN and the Time and all those other articles was the substance of the habeas filing, right? I guess I'm not sure. And you been marked Exhibit 3. I think I gave you out there. That, uh, Mr. Hobbs, is a transcript of Ms. Pazdar's statements at the rally. And I would like you to tell me, one, where you're mentioned, and two, what you think she said about you that caused you damage. Objection calls for a legal conclusion. And we can break it up if you like. Where in there are you mentioned by name, Mr. Hobson? You're not mentioned, are you? Not by name. Okay. Where in the, what is said, what does Ms. Pazdar say at the rally that caused you injury? Object is to form to the extent that calls for a legal conclusion. All the evidence. Where are you reading, sir? When you see the films and when you go to the website, you'll learn about the case and all the evidence that is there. And if this is there now, you just feel like, what can I do? Okay. We know what she's talking about there. All the new evidence is the crap they come up with about me, which has no merit whatsoever. Okay. Anything else that she says? that you, during the rally, that you believe caused you any injury, sir? Same objection. It's fine. Or is that it?
Anything else, Mr. Hobbs? I don't know. I'm sorry? I don't know. Well, see, this is my one chance where I get to ask you the questions. And so if there's something else in this statement that you are complaining about that you think caused you injury, I want to know about it now. Objection. He's not required to lay out legal theories. He's not asking witness. for legal theories. I'm sure asking. You are. You're asking. You're asking for him to apply the proof to the, the law, asking for a legal strategy. You're can asking him to say that he won't make an argument later on. You can answer the question, Mr. Hobbs. Well, I would feel like that she's signed, saying her scientifically proven statement is what they've come up with the stuff about me. Okay. Anything else? No. That's it. All right. We'll go ahead and take a break for lunch. We'll be going for a little bit. Right. Off the record. We're going off record for a break at 12.30 p.m. We are back on record after a break at 1.20 p.m. Ted, did you want to? Yes, very quickly, I'd like to reserve the right to read and sign, which I forgot to do on the front end. That's fine. Thanks. Also, also before uh, we start, uh, I wanted to uh, put on the record, um, you know, Cody and Ted, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, with regard to the con finishing the deposition this afternoon, we've agreed that if I need to leave for the airport, that Ms. Davis can can step in on behalf of Ms. Pastar and ask some additional questions, and, and there's no objection from you guys on for legal term tag teaming. That's correct. All right. And um, also, um, we discussed uh, right before we came back in uh, our desire, uh, everybody's desire, to try to finish the deposition of Mr. Hobbs today if possible, but with the understanding that it may be that as we approach the end of the business day that either the lawyers get tired or Mr. Hobbs gets tired and no one wants the witness to get tired and provide inaccurate testimony so that we would evaluate the uh, ability or the need to adjourn the deposition to then reconvene it at a time that is convenient to both the witness and all, and all counsel. Right? Yes. All right. And then finally, uh, we reached an agreement uh, in the hall that with regard to both of the def plaintiff's motions for partial summary judgment, the one that was filed a couple weeks ago as well as the one that was filed yesterday, we've agreed to uh, extend the date by which the defendants need to respond to those motions until September the 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, that is that both motions? Both motions. Okay. Both motions. And that we, um, by way of full disclosure, that the defendants anticipate filing motions for summary judgment in that, in that time frame and that we will be similarly uh, accommodating with regard to extensions of time. That, that, that you guys think that you need so that uh, with the goal of being to avoid any Rule 56 F motions to be able to get the discovery that either side needs to respond and to have uh, a single date on which the court could consider the motions at hearing. Is that right? That's correct. So we will uh, prepare the appropriate paperwork uh, to extend the response dates with regard to the plaintiff's two motions for summary judgment. Uh, we'll get that to you guys to look at this week with the goal of getting that filed um, and we appreciate uh, the, the professionalism in that regard and, and understand that it will be reciprocated. Thanks, sir. All right. Any, Bob, you okay with all that? Yeah, my only concern is, is that it's February trial day and we're pushing. I mean, if we don't file a motion for summary judgment, we need to get ours on file if we're going to do it. We're going to do it and we'll get it on file. And, you know, if we, if we can get our responses filed earlier, we'll do it. But, um, We'll get it done. Uh, it's not just us, but it's also Cody. Absolutely. Responding. And, okay. We'll work it through. I'm fine. I'm fine with all of it. Perfect. All right. Everybody ready? All right. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. Good afternoon. Uh, you understand you're still under oath? I still do. has the same force and effects in front of the judge and the jury testifying? I do. And uh, you did really well this morning on speaking up. And verbally, if I could ask you um, to continue that this afternoon. I know sometimes in the afternoon people get a little tired and voices okay. tend to trail off if, 
if uh, if you could speak up, I'll try to do the same. Is that fair? Sounds good. All right. Um, <coughs> would it be you also spoke with a woman by the name of Kathy Fry at the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, correct? I did. And a matter of fact, you you reached out and called her, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, and you and you did because she was another person in the media that you wanted to contact and get your story out about the DNA, right? I didn't know Kathy. I just wanted someone in the media, in the newspaper, to hear what I had to say, and they assigned Kathy to this. Okay, and you spoke with her several times, I assume. A few times. A few times, uh, and you spoke with her both before and after. Uh, Ms. Pazdar's letter appeared on the internet, correct? I'm not sure about the time frame. All right. Do you recall when you first spoke with her? No. Okay. Um, it was in 07, though, right? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know, the, not sure of the dates. Okay. She did, she, there was an article in the Arkansas Democratic Gazette that came out uh, in early 08, correct? You recall that article? I'm not sure of the date. You were, not the date, but you recall that the article came out, right? I know we did an article. I'm not sure when it came out. Do you recall how many articles came out in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette? No. More than one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? How many? I don't know. Bunch? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I live with, in Tennessee. All righty. Just by clarification with respect to which the, the case as a whole or written by Ms. Fry, I lost where we were at. Fair enough. Let me ask you, um, let me show you uh, an article, Mr. Hobbs, if I could. Uh, this is, it's Exhibit 39, Ted, to stipulation number one. Mr. Hobbs, this is an article written by Kathy Fry, appeared in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, February 3, 2008. Um, and ask if you, and this is one of the. I remember uh, this. Reputation is ruined, says stepdad of boy killed in '93. And this was one of the articles that Miss Fry wrote, right? It looks like it. Yeah, you have to speak up for everybody to it hear. It looks like it. It looks like it. And in here, uh, talks about, among other things, um, the DNA report, right? Okay. And, how you're, and how you're linked to it, correct? Okay. Well, it does that, right? You recall that? Very vaguely. Okay. Well, I mean, you. this is the, one of the articles you worked with. Uh, right. And I haven't read it recently, so I'm not that. really sure. I appreciate it. Do you recall reading it when it came out? Sure. I recall doing it. You recall doing it? Work, working with the reporter on it? Right. Okay. And when you were working with the reporter on it and it came out, do you recall uh, reading it when it was published? On February the third, right. Okay, and when it came out, do you recall anything in there that you said, "Man, this is wrong"? I recall some things that was put in there that I wish she hadn't have put it in there the way she put it in there. Did I you, believe you, as you that's here, the article I'm thinking about. Okay. As we sit here today, do you recall what you wish she hadn't put in there, like she put in? Her talking about my dad. You know, I don't know. Sometimes I think they pick up some of this stuff from other people and put it in there whenever you're doing an interview with them. There's been, there has been some uh, discussion in the press about your relationship with your father, hasn't there? There has. And uh, some discussion in the press about how perhaps you were abused by your father, correct? I was not. But there's been that discussion, correct? There has. There has been. Um, you love your father? Very much so. I think every, every son loves his father. Um, one of the, as we talk, as this article talks about uh, the DNA, it also talks about, in your linkage to the DNA that's found at the scene, uh, it talks about damage to your reputation, doesn't it? Okay, yes. I mean, it does. That was one of the things that you really wanted to get out to Miss Fry, which is how all of this discussion has ruined your reputation, right? Right. In February 3, 2008, that was a month and a half after the 
letter posted, the letter by Ms. Pazdar, right? Okay. Well, the letter by Ms. Pazdar was November the 26th, 07, right? Right. And it was after a little more than a month after the, um, the rally, because the rally was in December, right? Right. And this article is an attempt by you to get out to the public how your reputation has been ruined by the defense allegations, right? All the above. Right. Nowhere in here do you mention at all Ms. Pazdar or the rally or the Dixie Chicks, do you? I don't know. I haven't read in a while. Briefly look through it, sir, and tell me if in anywhere when you're trying to get your story out to the press of where your reputation has been ruined by these allegations, where in that story you talk about the rally, the Dixie Chicks, or Ms. Pazdar. It's not, it's not a single word in there about them, is it? On the second page of the article, it talks about how in February that you learned that the DNA has been linked to you, correct? February 07? Right? That's when the investigators showed up at my house, and they were the ones who told me right. about that. Right. That's the first time you knew about it. Right. Right. In 16 years, or 15 years at the time. And then it says here in March, so that March 7, that'd be March 7 of 07, right? I'm not sure. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a year on it. Well, we talk about January, sorry, Feb, February 07, and then it says on March 7, I'm assuming 07, you suffered an emotional breakdown. Did you suffer an emotional breakdown in March of 07? I ain't going to say what year, but yeah, I had some problems what with all it? this crap. And that was in the spring of 07, right? I ain't going to say what year. Well, what year was it? When did you have an emotional breakdown? You put a sign in your front yard, putting your contacts up for sale, and you lived in your and lived and you lived in your yellow Ford pickup with your teenage daughter. That was spring of '07, right? And yeah, if that's the day on here, yes. All right, and that way, and so you had the breakdown. You were feeling the effects of all the pressure building up. That was months and months prior to the time that Miss Pazdar put her letter on the internet or spoke at the rally, right? Look like it. All right. So she certainly didn't have any result, any, any cause. She didn't cause any of that the emotional breakdown in 07 or the <coughs> living in your pickup truck with your daughter. And the daughter's Amanda, right? It is. Okay. Objective extent requires legal conclusion relative to causation. Other than, I want to back up for a second. Before lunch, we were talking about the rally. Other than your brothers, have you spoken with anybody about what Ms. Pazdar said at the rally? And your lawyers. I'm not, I'm not seeking to, I don't want to know what you told your lawyers about the rally or what Ms. Pazdar said. But other than your brothers that you told me about before lunch, have you spoken with anybody about the rally or what Natalie said? I'm not sure. As we sit here today, can you recall of any discussions that you've had with anybody about the rally or what Ms. Pazdar said, other than your lawyers? I'm not sure. Well, see, the, my, my, the, when you say I'm not sure, Mr. Hobbs, and I appreciate that I don't want you to guess or speculate, but this is my one chance to find out. And so if you know of someone 
that you spoke with, I need to know that so that I, we can ask questions about it or figure out if it's something I need to talk to. If you don't, if you don't believe or you don't recall anyone, then simply, simply tell me that and we can move on to something else. I've had friends come by. Uh, I had one friend that I don't have anymore because of this. About, and I'm talking about specifically the statements at the rally. Exactly. Okay. Who was or the not the rally. I'm talking about the Natalie uh, Pastar letter. Not her statements, but her actions showing up and jumping on the bandwagon. Now, let's bash Mr. Hobbs. The more people that got on the bandwagon, the more people started to believe it. So it's not what she said. It's just the fact that she was physically present in Little Rock? Well, well, I mean, is it? Do you not? Well, let's back Her up. presence evidently meant something to somebody. Okay. Who is this friend? Former friend? Uh, Larry Mano. Where, where does Larry Mano live? Memphis, Tennessee. Do you have an address for him? Not on me. Do you know what part of town he lives in? I do. Where, what part of town does he live in? I don't know his address. I asked what part. East side. East side. Does he work with you? No. No. How how do you know Larry? We have worked in the past together. Where? In construction. Okay. How long have you known Larry? I don't know. I don't know how many years. Is he a good friend or an acquaintance? He has been. Has been. When did? Uh, but you don't recall when you first met him. When when did Larry say he didn't want to be your friend anymore? He never made a statement like that. Okay. Well, how would you describe your relationship with him now? I ain't have one with him. Okay. And the reason is because Natalie appeared at the rally? The reason, I ain't going to say the reason is, but the day I went by to visit with him, mm -hmm. he told me, he said, Terry, he said, you've got all these people after you. And he called out the Dixie Chicks' name. And he and it's, it's like he's starting to believe it. Because the more people got out there and said my name, the more he, if he, I felt like he believed them. Okay. Did you try to convince him you didn't have anything to do with it? I tried. You, what'd you tell him? The truth. Which is? I didn't do it? Yeah. I didn't do it. I don't care what all them yodel brains got to say about it. And he didn't believe you? I felt like he didn't. Okay. Okay. Well, now, the press had been kind of building up or reporting the DNA findings and whatnot for several months, several months, beginning in the spring of 07 going forward until Natalie made her, her letter, posted her letter, right? Okay. Well, that was that, good. Isn't that right? Isn't that what happened? Right? Let's look at uh, document nine and stipulation one, which is the July 20, 2007 <coughs> report from Action News. Action News, that's Janice Broach, right? That's, that's the lady you dealt with, right? Wanted to get your story out, right? Okay. I mean, that's the same Janice, it right? It is. And Action 5 News, right. Action News 5, that's where she works, right? Right? Right. Did she, in fact, and this is a report of the, she reported, did they not, Channel 5 News on July, July the 20th, 2007, new DA, DNA testing by the defense shows that none of the genetic material recovered from the murder scene links the West Memphis Three to the scene. Instead, defense attorneys say the test found DNA from Terry Hobbs, the stepfather of one of the murder, murdered boys. They reported that in July of 2007, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Okay. Did you, you start to get some calls from neighbors or friends when this was reported by Janice? Oh, yeah. All right. And it was this report, July the 27th report, was this a result of you reaching out to her to try to get your story out? Because you say I'd have to laugh at that and say there's something wrong with someone who would think that. This is, this is part of your trying to get the story out about the DNA, right? Probably. It looks like it. Looks like it. In here, this, this uh, Exhibit 9 to Stipulation 1, you say all those things in there? Are you accurately quoted, Mr. Hobbs?
Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Okay. And so you did say if Michael Moore or Christopher Byers had a piece of my hair on their shoestrings, well, these little boys came to my house and played with my, with our little boy pretty regularly, Hobbs said. Well, you said that, right? Right. Right. And so it's also reported here by Channel 5 News that the DNA results also revealed, according to court documents, that most of the DNA at the crime scene came from the victims, but some of it cannot be a trick connected to the victims or the defendants. I don't know what to make of that, Hobbs said. It's their job to do what they do. You, you quoted that, right? You quoted correctly there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and some of that DNA is also released to Mr. Jacoby, right? I don't know. There's one in so many million that could be him or could not be him. Same with mine. So it's your, te it, is, it's your belief in your understanding that the DNA reports show that it's pretty common to have a match like that? Is that your understanding? Objection, lack of foundation. Just asking for your understanding. No. No, it's pretty common that they, I mean, they're, it's a pretty close match from your, isn't it? No, not if what, what I understand it would. What do you understand it to be? One in so many millions it could have been. And no, no one has ever told me it's your hair or it's David's hair. The defense has come up with this and tried to convince everybody it was. The and police has never one time said yes it was to me. Okay. Tricks of the trade, y'all call it. <laughs> Um, exhibit 10 to stipulation 1. Another article, or another newscast from uh, Channel 8 in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Mother of West Memphis, three victims, speaks out about the new DNA. I have one question, I'm sorry. Back here on Exhibit 9. Talk about according to court documents. Did you have an understanding of what court documents they're referring to here? The DNA results also revealed according to most documents. That's the habeas filing, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Did you understand that to be when you when you spoke with Janice, trying to get your story out, that that was the court filings? Just by point of clarification, the habeas filing occurred in October. This was months before the habeas filing. That can't be the habeas filing. Do you know what court documents they're referring to? Uh -huh. In the, R in the newscast on Channel 8 in Jonesboro, July 20, 2007, uh, the TV station reports, now over a decade later, defense attorneys are saying a piece of hair found in one of the victim's shoelaces could link the crime scene to Stevie Branch's stepfather, Terry Hobbs. I mean, it, would you, and I, I can go through several of these, Mr. Hobbs, and I, I, don't, I don't need to, I don't necessarily want to, but would it be fair to say that starting in late spring, early summer, 07, it was fairly well known to those that followed the West Memphis Three case that your DNA had been linked to the crime scene. Objection, he can't possibly know what other people thought based on news reports. You can ask what he thinks. You think it's pretty well known that at least your DNA, it was out there in the press. The press was reporting that your DNA was linked to the crime scene. Right, the press was reporting that. Okay. Okay. But it still doesn't mean that any of that out there was my DNA. I appreciate that. Or it doesn't mean that to me. Did you ever talk to the police about the DNA? No. They never asked you about it? Oh, I'm not sure. And uh, I went and answered some questions with them. I don't remember what kind of questions we had. I've done that video with them. Uh, I read that thing, and that's a joke. What, what, what video? The press, the, the press conference? No, no. 
What what video, Mr. Hobbs? One of that they got me in that room asking me all them questions. Oh. That that's uh, that's part of when the police, the West Memphis police, then interviewed you again in June of '07. Okay. Is that right? Sounds close. And how many times have you been interviewed by the West Memphis police in conjunction with the murders? None, probably. This one they did. Uh, I'm thinking there might have been one. I, one I know I went and done fingerprints and feet prints, and I still I'm still never not a suspect, and I wasn't one back then. Please note that. And I have made this statement: if you think I'm a suspect, call the police department. They'll set you clear that up for you. On Channel 5, July the 21st, this is document number 12 in Stipulation 1, Miss Broach says, but now doing new DNA testing shows a hair from one of the boy's stepfather, Terry Hobbs, was found in shoelaces to tie up the eight-year-old eight -year boys. So? So I'm just saying that it was reported widely that your DNA was found, correct? Yeah. Okay. And it was reported widely um, well prior to the time that Ms. Pastar posted her letter or appeared at the rally, right? It was going on at the time she jumped on the bandwagon. On Channel 5 on the 21st, they also talk about finding, all, finding the knives and the, the knife that Stevie's grandfather had given him in your stuff. So, did you have in your possession, Mr. Hobbs? I don't know. A, I think a, I still have his pocket knife. You have Stevie's pocket knife? I think so. And is that a pocket knife that Stevie carried with him on until a regular I basis? Until I found it, until I seen Where, my stepson who wasn't old enough to have a pocket knife, I felt like I took the pocket knife from him and put it in a drawer with the rest of our pocket knives. How would you respond to witnesses who would testify that Stevie carried that knife with him up until the time that he disappeared? I think you'll find out people will say anything, but they don't have the facts. What facts do you have to prove that you took the knife from Stevie? I was his dad. I was acting as a responsible parent, not letting a six, seven, eight-year-old little boy carry a pocket knife. Aren't you aware that his, little, his mommy, his mother, said that he carried the knife with him up until the time <coughs> that he disappeared? She also said, I killed the boys, too. And yes, I'm very much aware of all that. Okay. The knives were reported in some of the, in the letter that Ms. Pazdar posted on the internet, wasn't it? Okay. Well, that's one of the things, right? That you're complaining about that. Object to the characterization of him complaining about the knives. In fact, the Eccles petition says that knives were not used. Document 13 to stipulation 1, Mr. Hobbs. It is an article from the Crichton Times written by Laura Smith. Have you seen this one before? I don't remember. Where's, Cri where's Crittenden, Arkansas? Crittenden, Crittenden County. I'm sorry. Crittenden County. Where is West that? West Memphis, Arkansas. It's in West Memphis. Now, do you remember talking to Laura Smith? I have talked to Laura a lot. Talked to her a lot over the years? Mm-hmm. Over the years uh, from? As a friend. As a friend and as a reporter? Right. Do you have a relationship with her as a friend as opposed to a reporter? Well, she was just being a friend. I think she was a curious reporter. Curious reporter <laughs> who tried to befriend, who, who befriended you. Okay. Fair enough. Have you ever been aware that the police department, in light of the 
can, uh, that the police department has attributed the DNA found on the suspects uh, that is attributed to you to secondary transfer? I've heard rumored that, but you know, I'm satisfied with that. You're satisfied with that? Yeah. What do you mean by that? You're satisfied with that? Because it happens. Secondary transfer? I could walk out here today with some of your DNA on me. I don't know how to respond to that. Um, exhibit 13 to stipulation one. Uh, talk about the talk about the new DNA. But the news of the DNA, uh, the results of the DNA testing on the crime scene evidence, has brought local and national attention back to the victims' families, to the three men in prison for the murders, uh, and West Memphis itself. Well, would you agree, Mr. Hobbs, that the results of the DNA testing in the summer of 07 brought national and local attention back to the the families, the men in prison, West Memphis itself? That sounds like it's one reporter's opinion. Do you agree with that opinion? Not necessarily. You disagree Not with Not to it? the families. Okay, do, do you disagree that it brought local and national attention back to the events, the murder, okay. who did it? Would you agree with that? Sure. Sure. The, the article goes on to say, the results found that no genetic material recovered at this crime scene belonged to Eccles, the West Memphis Three, and with the exception of one hair, all of the DNA recovered at the scene that was tested belonged to the victims. The hair was reportedly Hobbs's, meaning yours, and police attributed his hair to secondary transfer. So would you agree? About time they spoke up. Well, so they're saying it's your hair, but it's secondary transfer, right? That's how you read that, right? Yeah, that's how okay. you just read it. Well, I mean, is that what you understood, that in, that in the summer of 07, when the police were asked to comment on the, on the hair, they said, well, it's Mr. Hobbs's, but it's secondary transfer. Is yeah. that how you read that? That's how I just read it. Okay. And you agree with that? What's that? That, it's, that it is secondary? That it, I ain't going to say it is, because I don't know. Okay. But you agree that at least in the summer of 07, the police attributed it as your hair, but it said it got there by secondary transfer. Sounds good. Sounds good to you. Here's an article by the American Chronicle, August 15, 2007. It's Exhibit 14 to Stipulation 1, and it, by a fellow named Frank Brooks. You ever talked to Frank Brooks at the American Chronicle? No. No? Okay. And it talks about, not surprising given the, the time frame, August of 2007, it talks about the DNA in the reports. Um, in paragraph here, the third full paragraph on the second page. Uh, well, that's another. According to DNA status report filed by the defense and acknowledged by the prosecution, DNA evidence has arisen that cannot be linked to either defendants or the victims. As of this time, there is no identity match for the DNA, except for one surprising piece of evidence. Except one su for one surprising piece of evidence that managed to turn up: a strand of hair belonging to Stevie Branch's stepfather, Terry Hobbs was found intertwined with a knot in one of the shoelaces used to tie up one of the victims. This is no longer a case of similarity or possibility. Terry Hobbs has been genetically matched to the scene of the crime through DNA testing. Do you recall seeing this article? No. No? No. Articles like it? Similar, yeah. Okay. Did you sue Mr. Brooks or the American Chronicle? Oh, not yet. Not yet? <laughs> need, Would you I need a copy of that. Well, your lawyers have it. It's okay. been produced. It's been stipulated. It, this was out there in the public months prior to Ms. Pazdar making the statements that you completed. Right. Let's just put him on the list. Put him on the list. A little, a little more vengeance. <coughs> Our exhibit 16, stipulation 1. 
This is something from the internet stipulated to the Democratic Underground.com entitled Eccles Attorneys File New Motion Claiming Wrongful Conviction in West Memphis 3 Case. You're aware that there are many message boards and blogs that talk about the case, right, Mr. Hobbs? Sure. Uh, matter of fact, uh, here's the one. Well, that's actually on the internet, it's not a blog, but, no. uh, but fair, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Um, have you ever ever posted on the internet blogs no. about this case? No. How about anyone on your behalf? Your brothers, your I've family? Asked my, I have asked my family not to do this. We, we don't believe in lowering ourselves to this level, or this level, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's how we are, we are raised. Okay. Do you know if uh, if your brothers or others on your behalf have filed and I made postings on the know. blogs? I don't know that. What about Mr. Sampson when he was acting as your press agent or press spokesman? I never told him to. Did you tell him not to? No, I'm not sure. Okay. The statement that is in on Exhibit 16 it talks about the evidence in today's filings include, and then there are several, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullet points. Eight bullet, I'm sorry, eight bullet points. Uh, those are the same bullet points that you complained of Ms. Pazdar, right? I'm not sure. Uh, even to the point of... The filing includes a chronology of Hobbs' activity on the night of the crimes when he washed his clothes for no other reason than to hide evidence of the crimes. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, it, it, it's almost word for word, isn't it? Sound like it. And this is, this is over a month prior to Ms. Pazdar's posting, correct? And? And I'm just saying these same statements and these same allegations were posted worldwide and the subject of national media attention prior to the time that Ms. Pazdar made the statements that you're complaining of, right? Okay. I mean, that's correct, right? Object is to form. It's one publication. You don't, he has no personal knowledge as to where the extent of that one publication. Would you agree with me, Mr. Hobbs, that these types of factual statements and allegations were the subject of national and international, I think you said earlier, attention starting in the, sum, in the spring of 07, basically up and through today. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct? Correct. You didn't sue any of these people, right? You need to put them on the list? Yeah, not yet. Not yet. We'll put them on the list. I hope I can deal with every one of them. Arkansas Online Press Services, October 30, 07. Again, reports in October of 07 that hair matching your DNA is found in the at the crime scene. Right? I mean, there are there are there are a bunch. There page would, would, after would be fair page, to say I've be seen it. Page after page after page, week after week after week of those allegations. Isn't that right? Correct. And that all happens, it happened, it happened long before Ms. Pazdar made her statements, but it certainly continues to today, correct? Correct. Correct. In fact, here's one Will from you kind of justify her doing it? Um, I get to ask my questions, sir. In fact, here's, a, here's an article from the Los Angeles Times talking about, which is Exhibit 18 to Stipulation 1 talking about your DNA found at the crime scene. Another hair found on a tree root at the crime scene contained the DA of David Jacoby, who according to court documents was with his friend Hobb in the hours before and after the victims disappeared. That's true too, right? Probably. Well, not probably, it is true, isn't it? What? David was with me? David was with you before and after, right? Before and after the victims disappeared, 
he was at home when I went by his house and he went to work the next morning and as he went to work can't explain how his hair got there can you other Object than form seems a fact not in evidence can you explain how DNA, can you explain how DNA consistent with Mr. Jacoby's DNA was found at the crime scene Mr. Hobbs I don't think it was found at the crime scene it might have been found in the woods I don't think it was at the crime scene like you're saying if it was found at the crime scene would that be a a damning fact in your opinion no no because me and him never have been to the crime scene I didn't go there a long time after it. Have you ever been there? Sure. When did you first go to the crime scene? Probably a year later. Why? My wife wanted me to go with her. She felt like she needed to go. Okay. Did you... You've got access. I think you said you had internet and had access to the internet, right? At the time. At the time. What about today? You can always go to the library and get on it. Yes, sir, you can. Um, you're aware that the uh, West Memphis 3 defense team held a press conference, are you not? When? At the time that the DNA filings, at the, at the time that the habeas was, was filed? I'm not sure. Have you ever seen the video of the, the press conference that's on the West Memphis 3 website? Probably not. Now, just because we're related to it don't mean we care about everything that goes along with it. Has anyone ever told you about the defense team's press conference at the time they filed the habeas? Is it the one they done in Memphis? When did they do the one in Memphis? I'm, trying I'm to asking you, is that the one you're talking about? Well, what press conferences are you aware? That's I believe it. I, I believe it is. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I don't know if it was or not. Well, did you watch a press did you watch a video of a press conference that the defense team held in Memphis, Mr. Hobbs? Probably. I Probably. seen them acting See him doing something on there. I don't know what it was about. And about the DNA? Mm hmm. It was. About your DNA? Yeah. And about Jacoby's DNA? Objecting to characterization. That's actually the opposite of what the video says. And the knives? See, when you see this stuff, most of the time I don't watch it. Okay. Well, did you watch it or not? I'm not asking about most of the time. I'm asking, did you watch the Probably video? Probably some of it, then I don't care much about what anybody on that defense team has to say. Okay. Well, why so you I would turn it. Why'd you, why'd you watch some of it? Because people call you up and say, hey, turn it over here and watch this. Okay. And you, you might turn over and catch a piece of it, and it's over with. Just like your attorney filed a press release when he filed this lawsuit, are you aware that the defense team filed a press release when they made their habeas filings? I just told you. No, you didn't tell me, sir. My question is entirely different, which is, are you aware that it, there's a difference between a press statement and a press conference? Are you aware that at the time that the defense team filed their habeas that they issued a written press release? Probably not. Okay. Never seen it? I'd have to see it to recognize it. Okay. Mr. Hobbs, Mr. Marcus, that position <coughs> for, and ask if you have uh, seen this document before. I 
I don't believe I have. Is this press release consistent with your understanding of what was uh, announced by the West Memphis Three defense team at the time the habeas filing was done? Object to the characterization of the press release. Assumes fact, not in evidence. This is from who? The defense team. I might have seen it, and I don't remember. Would you have seen it at the time that it was filed or issued? Probably not. I'm when coming from the defense team, I don't follow them too much, especially since they're all hating on me. Well, you, you visited a lot with their investigators, didn't you? A few times until I figured out what they're up to. Would you agree with me, Mr. Hobbs, that the bullet points that are on the first and those eight bullet points that are on the first and second page of the press release are, in fact, the same information that's contained in Ms. Pazdar's November 26th letter? Familiar. I'm sorry? Looks like it. Okay. But it's talking about some wrong statements. Wrong statements that passed or made. Well, they're statements that the defense team made that you disagree with. Objection, that object that to Ms. characterization. Pat, we don't you know, know where that document came from. It's not an authentic document. If that is, in fact, the press release that was issued by the defense team, would you agree with me, Mr. Hobbs, that the statements that Ms. Houghton, that Ms. Pazdar made are simply uh, the same statements that the defense team said were supported in their federal court filings. I don't know. Well, it is. I'm not sure. Isn't it? In a, isn't it a fact that the statements? Because I'm reading this right here. And mm -hmm. This is a wrong statement. This place is Hobbs at the crime scene. Didn't happen. Isn't it a fact that Mrs. Ms. Pazdar's statements are simply a restatement of what the West Memphis Three defense team said that, that w was contained in the habeas filings. Restate the objection. It's fine. Isn't that I what she know. did? I don't know. Right. We need to, I think the court reporter, the videographer says we need to change tape. We are going off record for a tape change at 2.07 p.m. We are back on record after a tape change at 2.13 p.m. Still under oath, right, Mr. Hobbs? Yes, sir. When you first saw or first learned of the letter that Ms. Pazdar posted on the Dixie Chicks website in late November or early December of 07, uh, did you make any effort to reach out to Ms. Pazdar or the Dixie Chicks? No, sir. Why not? Why should I? See why they posted it? To get them to retract it? Did you take any effort to communicate with them whatsoever? I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't be in that position. So I take it your answer to my question is no. You exactly. Not. Okay. They interfered in my business, our family's business. We've done nothing to them. What else? Anything else? Mm, nope. Why do you think the little boys were murdered? I don't know why. How do you think they were murdered? I don't know how. When were they murdered? I'm not sure about that either. Where were they murdered? West, I think West Memphis, I don't know. <coughs> Who murdered them? Three young men in prison. Is it a matter of, do you, th do you believe, sir, that it's a matter of public concern as to who murdered the three little boys? I object to the extent of it. Just ask him. For a legal conclusion. Asking his opinion. Does he have an opinion as to whether or not it's a matter of public concern mm -hmm. to get to the truth of who murdered the three little boys? It doesn't matter what I think. They're going to get involved anyway. It's not my question. Sir, would you answer my question? 
Same objection. Repeat the question. Is it a matter of public concern as to who murdered the three little boys? Shouldn't be, Repeat but it is. Shouldn't be, but it is. Why shouldn't it be a matter of public concern as to who committed three heinous murders? Because there's three bastards sitting in prison for today. Mm -hmm. And that was a and, and and that was that trial back in '94 was a was a matter of national and, and international concern, was it not? So. So it was a matter of public concern back when the th the West Memphis Three were tried and convicted, but it's not a matter of public concern now. If there are questions about the sufficiency of the of the verdict and the trial and the evidence. I'm happy with the trials. I understand that, but my question is, is it your testimony that it was a matter of public concern at the original trial, but it's not a matter of public concern today? It doesn't matter to me what the public thinks about it. You, see, you, test, you told us earlier that it's not a matter of public concern now because there was a trial. And my question to you, sir, is was it a matter of public concern in, in the early to mid-90s when there was a trial, but it's not a matter of public concern now? Objection to the extent that calls for a legal conclusion. Asking for this witness's opinion. I don't know. Okay, so, it, so you don't know if it's a matter of public concern about uh, who well, murdered the three little boys today? There's three boys sitting in prison today. Is it, for is it, is it possible, Mr. Hobbs, that they were wrongfully convicted? Not in my opinion. Is it possible? That, while, you may not, while you may believe and have the opinion that they were properly tried and properly convicted, you'll acknowledge, won't you, sir, that others have an entirely different opinion? Everybody's entitled to their own An opinion, and everybody's entitled to express that opinion, are they not? To some degree. Okay. And is it, it is a matter of public concern, you would agree with me, sir, that it's a matter of public concern about whether or not the West Memphis Three were wrongfully tried and convicted of murder. That can yes. be an issue of public debate, can it not? A low mentality public, probably. Your wife Pam's entitled to her opinion as to whether or not the West Memphis Three were wrongfully tried and convicted, are they not? She is. And you're entitled to your opinion as to whether or not they were wrongfully tried and convicted, correct? I am. I'm sorry? I am. And your wife Pam's entitled to her opinion as to whether or not you were involved. She in is entitled. Case, right. And Ms. Pazdar is entitled to her opinion as to whether or not the West Memphis Three were wrongfully convicted, is she not? She is. Okay. And the Dixie Chicks are entitled to their uh, to have an opinion as to whether or not uh, the West Memphis Three were wrongfully convicted, correct? They are. Will those be offered as deposition exhibits? Oh, these are all deposition exhibits. Okay. I don't know that I need to offer them under the federal rules. They're just exhibits. But they will be attached to the deposition. Oh, absolutely. Paragraph 19 to your complaint, sir, that you reviewed and approved prior to the time it was filed. You state that uh, Ms. Pazdar's repeated libelous publications concerning the involvement of plaintiff, which is you, uh, was, among other things, false and reckless at the time of publication. And my question to you, sir, is what facts, facts, do you have to support your belief that her statements were reckless? Because she don't know what she's talking about. How do you know that? Because she's accusing me. Other than the fact that you don't think and she And I know that I didn't do this. Do you know what she looked at? I don't even care. You don't care? What she looked at. The fact that, in your opinion, she's wrong makes it reckless. Sure, why not? Do you have any reason to believe that she knew that what she was saying was false at the time she, she said it? 
I had no recollection. For legal I mean, you have no base. You have no factual basis to say that Ms. Pazdar knew that what she was saying was false at the time she said it. Do you? Objection to the to the extent that it calls for a legal conclusion. Asking for facts, counsel. I would think that she probably read the police report where they said that he wasn't a suspect. Then he ain't now, and then she just shot off. Do you know that she read the police report? I don't. Do you? I see. I get to ask the questions. That's uh, that's the that's the great thing about today, Mr. Hobbs. Because I get to ask the questions. I don't know that she did. Do you know that if she looked at the uh, press release? I don't know what she looked at. Do you know if she watched the press conference? I don't know what she watched. Do you know who she talked to, if anyone, on behalf of the defense team? I don't know. So as we sit here today, you have no facts that would support your belief that Ms. Hobb, that Ms. Pazdar knew that what she was saying was false at the time she said it. Same objection as earlier. Right? I don't know where she get her information from, but she should have talked to somebody who knew about it. My, my question, I need you to answer my question because it's an important question, Mr. Hobbs, which is do you have any facts or do you have any documents that support your allegation that Ms. Hobb, that Ms. Pazdar knew that the facts that she was stating on either her letter or at the rally were false at the time she made it. Same objection. You don't, do you? I don't know where she gets her information from. Okay. Thank you just know you didn't do it. And you just know it's not your DNA. How do you know it's not your DNA? You don't know one way or another if it's your DNA, do you? Well, I've never been convinced it was mine. The police have never pulled me in there and said it's yours. And that's not my question. My question is you don't know for a fact that it's not yours, do you? I don't know it is. I don't know if it's not. Paragraph 21, Mr. Holmes. The acts of the defendants have caused you to suffer personal injuries. Right? That's what you say. Right? And? What personal injuries? Emotional. What other personal injuries? Dealing with my family over it, watching my kids go through it, that causes you some problems too. Emotional. How have, how have your emotional injuries manifested themselves? And is this separate from the personal breakdown you had in March when you lived in the back of your car? Okay. Is it? Or are these the same personal injury, emotional injuries? No, I've had to deal with a lot of things over through all this. I, and I am sympathetic and appreciate that. I really am. But my question to you, sir, is representing my client, is I'm trying to figure out what damage, what emotional damages you have suffered as a result of the statements that my client made, as opposed to the national and international scrutiny that's been going on for months and months and months prior to the time that my client had anything to say. Objection to the extent that calls for a legal conclusion. I'm simply asking you what damages you have suffered. Same objection. Can you sit here, can you, can you point to me one damage? And that it's separate and apart from all of the things that we talked about starting in the summer and the spring of 07 that is caused as a result of what Ms. Pazdar said. Objection requires, to the extent it requires a legal conclusion. 
I'm not asking for a legal conclusion, counsel. Sure, I'm you're, asking, you're for asking for the him, facts. You're asking for him to apply the facts to the law of causation. And he doesn't know what facts. proximate cause is. I'm just asking for facts. You're linking the facts you're asking to to causation, which is a legal concept, which he's not required to address. Can you answer the question, Mr. Hobbs? No. No? Have you been to any doctors since November of 07? I have a doctor friend I called. What doctor friend? Mike Mitchell. He wanted me to come in and visit with him. I was aggravated and mad and would not go. I just wanted him to give me something for my blood pressure. Okay. So you didn't go? No. Have you have you sought any have you sought and received any care from a physician due to this emotional distress? No, but I could. But you have as you don't said here believe today. in too much doctrine. Are you able, Mr. Hobbs, to separate the emotional injury that you suffered as a result of the underlying murders themselves as opposed to what Ms. Pazdar said in November of 07? Objection to the extent that calls for legal conclusion. Just ask if you can separate that, that injury. I will say no. Can you separate it from the stress and the emotional toil that I'm sure the trials themselves put upon you and your family? No. Nope. How about the, the ongoing appeal, appeals by the three boys? Can you separate that out? No one's ever brought my name into it up until 07. My question, sir, is are you able to separate the injury, the, mo the emotional nope. injury, between the ongoing appeals and what Ms. Pastor said? No, because they've been going before she come along. What about the anxiety and distress and injury that your interaction with the defense team and their investigators has caused you? Wrong last. It caused me a lot of problems. In fact, you've testified, you're not testifying, you quoted in newspaper articles saying they ruined your life. They helped. They helped. And the, the, Mr. Reardon and the defense counsel, they've ruined your life. They've had a part of it, too. Are you able to distinguish any of that, the ruining of your life, by the investigators or the defense counsel from the letter that Ms. Pazdar posted on the website or the statement that she made at the rally? You put them all together and I shouldn't have a life, should I? didn't say that. I certainly didn't say that. That wasn't my question. My question is... That's how it is. My question is, can you separate it out? I don't have to. Can you? I'm asking you no. if you can. Can you separate out the emotional injury that you have suffered as a result of the, the countless newspaper, media, television articles about the murder, the appeals, and quite frankly, the recent connection of your DNA to the crime scene? separate and apart from that which Ms. Pazdar's letter or statement at the rally? No. Nope. You state, any other than, talk about personal injuries, talked about emotional injury, any other personal injuries Mr. Hobbs, or is that pretty much it from the personal injury side? I'm sorry? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it? Okay. Talks about the next one, injury to your reputation. How has Ms. Pastar's statement in the letter or at the rally injured your reputation as compared to had injury to injury is what it does. Had injury to injury. Because Ms. Pazdar certainly wasn't saying anything new, was she? No. And she all it was it was just one more celebrity 
Let's kick him while he's down. Well, there's one more celebrity asking folks to become involved, to, to send money in and make the politicians aware of what was going on. That's what she was doing, wasn't it? Well, nothing Objecting going on. characterization of the letter. There wasn't anything going on? They hadn't filed the, the habeas? There wasn't, I don't know. They're there wasn't, just trying to make a bunch of nothing out of nothing. Why would she do that? Ask her. Well, I'm asking you, what, do you have I an opinion as to why, why she thinks she I would do that? I don't care why. She needs to mind her own business. Because it's, it's, it's none of her business if you were involved. I wasn't involved, and her saying I was, she it's, needs to understand that. It's none of her business if three innocent teenagers, what were, what were young teens, now young adults, sit in jail for crimes they didn't commit. That's not her business, is it? Then maybe she needs to address that and leave me out of it. What was your reputation? I want you to tell me what your reputation was prior to November the 26th. 2007, Mr. Hobbs. Taking into account your whole life experience and everybody that knew you, what was your reputation? Pretty screwed up one, ain't it? <laughs> Is that your answer? Nope. Oh, okay. That's off the record. And then it's not off the record. And I would, I, honestly, I would agree that's pretty screwed up. Yeah. When you? Seem like the more people get a hold of it, they just uh, they try to make it the wor worse for you. Well, but I, I, you've got out. That, I mean, you've had out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What was your ahead. What was your reputation in the community prior to November the 26, 2007, Mr. A Trump? man that's been through hell. Okay. And what was your reputation after Miss Hobbs made the statement and appeared at the rally? It's the same one. Miss Pastor. Miss Pastor. Miss Pastor. After Ms. Pastor posted her letter and spoke at the rally, reputation was the same, wasn't it? Let's kick him while he's down. But had the reputa had your reputation changed? Couldn't get any better. Couldn't get any worse, could it? Uh, or could it? Yeah, it could get worse. Could it get worse? The more big mouths out there shooting off, yeah, it gets worse. Okay. You'll agree that you'd let a, shall we say, a colorful life? I've had a good life up until the murders of our little boy. And then it all went south, didn't it? It could have been better. Arrested for drug, drug use and possession. Half a joint. Accused of molesting your teenage daughter. Divorced. Bankruptcy. Lawsuits. You shot your brother-in-law. National, you're nationally connected through international press in the summer of 07 with DNA, your DNA at a crime scene, the murder of your little boy and two other little boys. Object compound question. And that was your reputation prior to November of 07, wasn't it? Same and? And it's the same. Re How can it get worse? It would get better if people quit jumping on the bandwagon. How could it get worse? How did what Miss Pazdar say damage your reputation any more than what the conduct that you had led through the last 15 years done? She just pulls more in people, influence in that people don't even pay attention until celebrities get on board. So she threw light on the subject. She didn't throw light on nothing. She shot off. My question to you, sir, is how did, your, how did your reputation change, other than the fact that Ms. Pazar shot off and brought more people to look at the West Memphis Three website and what went on, which is what she said. Look at the website. Look at the evidence. Look at, look at the habeas corpus, the, the court pleadings, and make a judgment for yourself. How is that any different than throwing light on, light on the facts and asking people to make their own minds up? How did that damage your reputation? People tend to believe celebrities, even though some of them don't know what they're talking about. People will follow their stories. Any other any other way that your your reputation was harmed, Mr. Hobbs? Ain't no telling. No, th <laughs> this is the time to tell. There ain't no telling. Can you ain't no telling can what other quacks out there quacking off? Can you can you articulate for me any other way? This is my one chance before you get up on the witness stand. Take the oath again in front of a federal court judge and swear what, what went on. 
This is my chance to find out how you believe you've been harmed. And so I want to know how your reputation has I've been, been threatened. Has anyone told you that? No, sir. I have been. Who, who threatened you? Some quack on the Internet. When did this happen? It's, there's a police report over there. It's the second police report that I couldn't think about. Okay. There's a police report about it. All right. When did this happen? I, a couple months ago. Okay. And these people are reading everything they see on the Internet and forming an opinion. Okay? And now they're threatening me over this crap. And don't sit here and, and try to get me to feel good about it because I don't. And this woman, shooting off like she has, has no right to jump in on there and do this. We need both police reports, obviously. Oh, yeah. They're, I guarantee you they're at the police department. Any other damage to your reputation, sir? Any, anything else you want to tell me, you're going to tell the jury about how you've been harmed as a result of my client's conduct? No comment. No, I don't know. No? A third element of your damage is here, Mr. Hobbs. You say that uh, your uh, injury to your business and uh, professional and business. You've got professional and business damages. All right. Well, what what professional and business damage? And I'm reading from paragraph 21. What professional and business damages do you have that you're seeking to recover? Any? Well, it'd be nice to see people quit coming in my business. And uh, saying, do you see what they're on TV saying about this man today? They're talking to me, and they're talking about me, threatening it, making their threats. It'd be nice if these people way back here, which, which wherever it is, it'd be nice if I don't have the Dixie Chicks report, but it'd be, it'd be nice if them people back there would quit doing what they doing so I can go to work and not have to worry about people coming in my place of business and threatening the person. They don't even know who it is, but and it's me. Because of what everything that has happened in the past. That happens. What happens? Well, I just told you. Oh, that happens. Okay. So it's happened more than the fellow from Australia? Exactly. How many times? I don't keep up with them. I get tired of them. More than five? More than ten? Once a month? Once a year? How often does it happen, Mr. Hobbs? Like I told you, I don't keep up with them. Well, I'm trying to get a sense for how often folks, did you say folks come into your business and hassle you? I don't have to just say, there's people sitting right in there here hear it too. I'm sorry. Say what? I didn't understand. Were there people, people out here in the conference There's room? People about? in my work that has sat there and heard the people come in and say stuff about it. People just talk about you. You don't like it. They don't even know why. It's me they're talking about. They're just in there talking about it. It meaning the West Memphis Three? And about the, the new DNA, about the stepdad that they think done it. They're showing his picture all over the news. Well, have you been fired from your job because of that? No. Okay. Have you have you lost Oops. hours because of it? Yeah, I've had some problems. What problems? Losing time, sleep. I'm not talking about sleep at the moment. I'm talking about have you lost time from work because people are coming in and hassling you about no, it? No, I don't lose time. I go back and stay away until people leave. Okay, you just don't come to Who's your boss? His name's Terry Davis. Where's he work? What's the name of your company right now? Discount. You're a salesman? I am. What's the, what's the business address of your company, sir? The business what? Address. Let's see. Okay. And what are your duties as a salesman? Sell products. Who do you sell product to? Publix. Publix grocery? People. People in the public. Give me an example. It's me a Home Depot type operation. Okay. So you, you basically help people find things. If I need to come in and find something to fix my washer, Correct. you help me. Correct. Okay. And how long you had that job? A little over two years. Two years. Oh, what did you do before? 
courier work. Courier, what kind of courier work? Transporting goods from one place to another. Like a truck driver? No, courier. Courier papers? <laughs> papers, letters, boxes. Okay. Uh, your own a private contractor. Okay. Was uh, Why'd you move from a courier to a salesman? Better job? <coughs> no, excuse me. No, that is the time when all this stuff started coming out on the news, and I had made my mind up that I was going to just move and get away from Memphis. I was tired of the crap that was going around on the news. So you left town and got a different job? Well, I didn't get to leave town. But right. But that was your goal. You wanted to leave town. Right. So people come in and they want to talk as you're helping them find stuff to fix the, the washer and dryer or the sink. And they just, part of the conversation comes up, kind of West Memphis 3? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Okay. All right. How often does that happen? It used to happen quite a bit. Okay. And they would do that not even knowing that you're Terry Hobbs, right? Exactly. Just seeing it on the news, they would just come in and start talking about it. And, how, and this has been going on since... You got there, right? I started there just before this started. All right, and that, but and those types of people coming in wanting to talk about the West Memphis Three, that that happened pretty much from the get-go when you started. I started before it started okay. on the news. Okay, did that same sort of discussions or community discussion happen while you were a courier? No, because it hadn't started yet. It hadn't started yet. It, it all started when the in the spring of 07 when the DNA results were released. Right. Right. Okay. Same, you have the same position today as when you started in 07? I do. Same, same pay scale? Roughly. Hadn't been demoted? No. Hadn't been promoted? No. Just kind of same there won't status be quo? no promotion there. You're just there. Just status quo? Yeah. Okay. How else have you been hurt in your professional or business? Mr. Hobbs. I don't know. Well, see this dealing thing. with the public. This is this is much this is my time to ask, and this is your time to tell me. I just told you. Just dealing with the public. I shouldn't have to deal with the public over this. Again, in paragraph 23, sir, we're talking about intentional affliction of emotional distress or slash outrageous conduct. Paragraph 23, you talk about that Ms. Pazdar's conduct was intentional and reckless. What facts, if any, do you have that demonstrate that her conduct was intentional? You don't have any, do you, other than what you've told me so far? You'd almost have to think if she didn't in intentionally mean to do something, she would have never got in here and, and did what she did. Okay. Have you told me all the facts? As we sit here today on July the 21st, 2009, have you told me every fact that you know of that you believe supports your allegation that Ms. Pazdar's conduct was intentional? with regard to the spreading of lies. Well, I think it was intentional. I'm, Why she, do you think that? Because she shouldn't have never come in here and did what she did. Okay. And that's the only basis you've got for this intentional, is that she, she shouldn't have come in and did have done what she did. And the basis, and because of that, she intentionally said things that she knew was false. Is that your testimony? Is that the basis of your lawsuit? I don't know. Well, I mean, this is my chance. Again, this is my chance to say, I, you can't say, I don't know. This is my chance to exactly find out. To the extent that it calls for legal conclusion, again, to try to apply the evidence to the proof to get him to admit that the legal standard is improper when he's not required to know the legal standard. Can you tell me? The, I'm just trying to find the facts. I'm trying the to facts are is in that other page there where your client comes up here 
gets in on the bandwagon, bashes me for all the wrong reasons, and you're trying to sit here and justify it. And you're talking about the rally at that point. When she comes up here, that's the rally, right? In the letter campaign that she asked folks to take a look at it and send letters into the governor. You didn't like that, did you? Draws a draws light of day on things. Draws attention to you. For all the wrong reasons. Why, because she says it, does that make it so? Any other facts, Mr. Hobbs, that support your belief that she was acting intentionally or recklessly? I had to ask her. As you sit here, you know of nothing else. You had to ask her. Well, I'm asking you, do you know of anything else? Mm -mm, nope. Nope, okay. And 23, resulting in severe emotional, mental, and physical injuries. Those are the same injuries that we talked about earlier, paragraph over 21. Over. Any other any other injuries? Nope. Nope. I don't know. Emotionally, mainly. I mean, that's the, sa this is the same we talked about, right? Okay. The same. Well, no, you can't just agree to me. I'm asking you. Is it the same damages and harm? Same. Nothing new. You have to answer out loud, sir. No. Paragraph 25 says that uh, the acts of the defendants place plaintiff in a false light. What false light did the letter place you in? Back to the extent that it calls for a legal conclusion. What do you claim? What false light do you claim that the the letter placed you in? Same objection. That's fine. She put it out there. People believed it. Okay. What do you call that? Some would call it the truth, sir. And some call it whatever. All right. <laughs> Look at Exhibit A, which is the letter. Would you agree with me, sir, that from where her signature is through the top is Ms. Pazdar explaining that she thinks she has the personal belief, I believe that three men are in prison for crimes they didn't commit. She tells folks to go to the website, to look at the evidence, and to make a donation to Arkansas Take Action in hopes that the judge will grant a new trial. Would you agree that that's the gist of the, the letter from her signature to the top? Object to the extent that it calls for legal uh, conclusion. Would you agree that that's the gist of that part of the letter? I Objection. guess. Is that a yes? I haven't read it. I want you to read it. No, as of right now, I hadn't read it. Well, then I want you to today. Well, this, this is what you, you hadn't read it till today? No, I have read it before today, okay. but I hadn't taken the time to read it today. Okay, I want you to read, and we can go off the record while you do that, so we don't burn up tape. I want you to read from the very top where it says November 26, 2000 letter, a letter from Natalie Maines, down to where she says, sincerely, Natalie Maines passed on. I've and read it in the past. Do you need to read it again? No, I don't care about it. You don't care about it. All right. Well, I want you to tell me, sir, isn't the gist of that part of the, of the letter where she basically says that she thinks the boys were wrongfully convicted, that she encourages people to watch the HBO documentaries, to look at the court findings, and then contribute to the defense fund. It's really a call, you know, please, please get involved. Objection. You'll agree that that's, that's the gist of the letter, right? Same objection. Yep. Okay. And then from where it says, sincerely, Natalie Maines, from there down, which will roll over to the last page, second page, those are the eight bullet points that attempt to summarize 
what's in the recent court filings and which had been publicized for many weeks and months earlier, correct? Okay. Objection. Don't you agree with that? the evidence. Yep. Yep. That's, and you may not agree with the characterization, but you'll agree that that's what you may, you may disagree with the conclusions that the evidence points to, but you'll agree that that's what's in the findings, right, or the filings, correct? <coughs> there's no, there's no basis, no foundation. It, for we, the we're going objection form. We're not coaching, Ted. There's no. I will note your. Basis. I will note your objection to form. There's Can no you? foundation for him having read the pleadings. You cannot get concessions for him from him what are in or not you in know the what? pleadings when he hasn't I'm read them. About tired of a coaching the witness. I'm not coaching yes, the witness. Yes, you are. That's exactly what you that haven't is. established whether or not he read the pleadings. Well, then object to form and That's then what I and did. then stand by your objection. And if I have a question about the, which you can enlighten me on, I will certainly I'm going ask. to state the basis for my objection. And not unless I ask. The federal rules say not mm -hmm. unless I ask. You object as to form or you instruct the witness not to answer, and I'm about tired and I've about had it of you co I'm coaching about had this it witness. With you trying to get concessions about him from a document that he's never read, there's no foundation for the document. It's not valid. I mean, the judge isn't going to say, oh, Mr. Hobbs says it's a public concern, therefore it must be a public concern. It's just <laughs> you know what? I think that the, the point that Dan is making is that you object as to form and the witness has to say, I haven't read it, so I don't know. You don't tell him that he hasn't read it, so he knows how to answer. I'm objecting to the lack of foundation. That's objections and that you form. Assume, and that you assume facts that aren't evidence. I know, there's a, it's, it's crazy. You'll agree with me, won't you, Mr. Hobbs, that the points that are following Ms. Pastar's signature are the very points that are in the press release that I showed you earlier and which were and which were reported in some of the press clippings that I showed you earlier that attempt to summarize some of the defense filings. Objectives to form Thank you. mischaracterization of a press Thank release. You. I've seen them before. You've seen them before. And where'd you see them before? Everywhere. Everywhere. In the press releases, right? Right. In the, in the, in the newspaper, right? Right. On the TV. Right. In the court filings. Have you? I haven't read, haven't that. read the court filings. Okay. Uh, on the, um, in the, in the video press, in the, the, the press conference. I didn't really watch it. But these are the same things they talked about. You know that. Object is to form. He says he didn't read it. You he, can't ask him what they say it if he did say he didn't see it. You know, I'd like to know the factual basis, or the, not the factual, the basis on which you think you can say anything more than objection form. Because I'm about ready to seek mm -hmm. sanctions from the court, Ted. Mm -hmm. Call them up. We, we, you know what, we, we just may. And so what's the basis for your belief that you can say anything more than objection form or don't answer the question? state the, the factual basis of my objection. No, the rules if you want to do something, the rules, then do it. The rules clearly state that all you can say is objection form. And that if I then have a question about whether or not your objection is to form is proper, then I can ask you to explain. But if you don't, the law and the cases, I think, are fairly clear that you step way over the line of proper advocacy when you start to coach the witness by speaking objections. That's the very reason when why the you rules say, are amended. When you, say, uh, when you say I'm only supposed to object to form, yep. and then you're trying to dump all this stuff in at some other point, and then you're going to be right there saying, well, he didn't state what his objection is. Ted, Ted, you yep. know, I, I mean, I know Dan is from Texas, but you mm -hmm. know the rule in Arkansas is why he's stating it. Any federal judge is going to say object, form, period, and let the deposition continue. Mm -hmm. you, you are going overboard. I mean, your record is I'm going preserved. to state. Your record is I'm going to preserve the record because when he says that something 15 times that something is a press release to try to get my client to concede that it's a press release when it's not in fact a press release, I'm going to say something about it. Objection form preserves it, and you know it. You're a good enough lawyer that you know that. 
it's saying it, whether it is or isn't a press release is not coaching the witness. It simply isn't. Look at it. It's not a press release. Are there, I think the record's pretty clear, Mr. Hollis. I'm okay. Um, from where it says the following is just some of the DNA and forensic evidence that were presented in the federal court hearing. And then it goes through the various eight, eight points. Do you have reason to believe that any of those statements are false? Any of what statements? The things that start in late October through the end of this exhibit. Are they false? Jack, compound question you're asking him for to get a blanket approval of a long list. You can answer the question, Mr. Hobbs. And we can take a paragraph by paragraph if you'd like, sir. Are you asking me if I think any of these statements here are wrong? Yes. I would start. You want to do paragraph by paragraph? I think, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Damien Eccles was wrongfully convicted. Okay. I don't believe that. Okay. Would you agree with me that the papers that were filed in federal court in Arkansas certainly allege that? That doesn't mean it's fact, but things like that happen. Things like uh, what happened? Just a form. It's in facts, not in evidence. Things like what happened? Wrongfully convicted? People are wrongfully convicted. No, no. People making statements like this. Okay. Matter of fact, everything has happened in the courts, as you call it. Nothing has changed. You would agree with me that the papers that were filed with the federal court in, Ar in October attempt to establish that Damian Eccles was wrongfully convicted? Object as to form lack of foundation. You know that to be the case from all the press release. That that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to say that he was wrongfully convicted, give him a new trial, right? You know what? If you were sitting on death row and it was your time to die and you had a yellow streak running down your back, you, wouldn't you not? come up with any and everything that you could possibly to save your own life. If I was sitting on death row and didn't do it, I certainly would as well. Well, you should have sat in the same trial that I sat in, then you probably wouldn't be thinking like that. So do you think, Mr. Do you think Damian Eccles is not entitled to ex pursue and exhaust his legal rights, sir? I think his legal rights should be ex removed from him from day one after a conviction. Okay. But the appeals process allows them to do this kind of stuff right here, okay. which is kind of a system that needs reworked. Okay. You would agree with me, though, as part of that appeal appellate process that Mr. Eccles' team, defense team, had made a filing that, tried, that in October attempted to persuade the judge that he was wrongfully convicted. They gave, gave it their best shot. They gave it their best shot. Would you also agree that the filing that was made in October uh, included DNA evidence that did not link any of the three boys to the crime scene? Yeah, just a form, lack of foundation. Just asking from your understanding, sir. I've heard that. Okay. You, were, you, you went to the trial, right, every day? Every day. And you know that the prosecution claimed that they, Mr. Eccles had sodomized the boys, right? One of them. One of them. And uh, none of Mr. Eccles' DNA was found on any of the boys, including the one that was allegedly sodomized, correct? I believe so. Okay. Matter of fact, the only DNA that was found on the boys was DNA that couldn't be identified to anyone, isn't that right? Okay. Is that right? I don't know. Well, other, than, other than yours, of course. They've never said nothing about mine. This they, defense they, team brought mine up. It wasn't the law. This is what they do. This is what they filed. They filed it as public record, correct? Object just to form like a foundation. I mean, that, you, you, that's your understanding that the defense team made that public filing in an attempt to persuade the judge that the boys were deserving of a new trial, correct? Yeah. Okay.
Have you ever spoken with anyone about what was in the uh, habeas corpus filings? Nope. Okay. Not that I know of. That's fine. I didn't mean to interrupt you, sir. We were going through Exhibit A to Exhibit 2, which is your complaint, and asking you, when Ms. Pazdar's signature down, what you felt was false. What was set out in there that was false. And I guess we're up to the second, the first bullet point on the second page. And I, I know from your testimony that you disagree with the fact that DNA tests show that hair belonging to you was found in the ligature of one of the victims. Correct? I've heard that. I still ain't been convinced that it was. Okay. You have heard that that was contained in the, you have, even though you have not read, you have heard that that was contained in the filings, correct? Right. And you have heard and you know from reading the various press releases and the press release, the press articles and the TV reports that that was widely circulated beginning in June of 07, that that was widely publicized to the public that your DNA was found in the ligature of one of the victims, correct? <coughs> of course. Of course. And the, and matter of fact, we looked at the, at the press article the press, uh, one of the press pieces earlier, where the West Memphis police attributed your DNA being found to um, secondary transfer, right? That's how they explained it. Okay. Isn't that right? <clears throat> All right. I mean, that's how they explained it, right? We, we, do you recall when we looked at that press article? Right. And in fact, is, is it really a surprise that they had to do that, Mr. Hobbs, given the fact that they had spent so much money and so much time convicting three boys? years earlier that crime that they said well they secondary transfer does that surprise you objective form like foundation what are you saying like personal knowledge i'm asking if it surprised you given the fact that the west memphis police had spent so much time and so much money over the years saying they got it right with the convictions that when dna attributed to someone else was found in the ligature of one of the victims that they attributed it to secondary transfer. What if it was secondary transfer? What if it wasn't? What are you saying? Saying that there could be a question about whether or not you were somehow involved in these crimes. Well, who says that? Well, Bunch of quacks. Well, uh, we've got four volumes of stipulations of people from the New York Times to CNN to like a bunch of question to form false characterization you, with stipulations. How do you? Uh, well, why don't you call the police department and talk to them? Maybe they'll help you out and point you in the right direction. <laughs> how do you explain Mr. Jacoby's statement? I mean, not statement, Mr. Jacoby's DNA, which is I the had second no explanation for that. Objectives to form. Like we was in them woods like all night. Personal knowledge. You were in those woods all night. Just you and Mr. Jacoby. No, we done been over that. Yes, we have. You forget. And so, no, I didn't forget. Just My question is, were you and Mr. Jacoby in those woods all night? Along with other people. I thought we done talked about that. You and Mr. Jacoby, were you guys ever alone when you were searching? Uh, probably not. Probably not? Well, there was a, well, it might have been a while. Might have been a while yep. that you guys were alone. Yeah. And Mr. Jac it's your testimony, Mr. Jacoby was with you all night in the woods. We were together quite a bit that night. Nope, it's not my question. My question is, you testified earlier that you and Mr. Jacoby were together all night in the woods until it was time for him to go to work. Exactly. And so is that yeah. your story or are you changing it? No, we were. All night, you and him, together? Up until he went to work. Which was at what time? And remember while ago I testified that he was with Pam at, a, at one point? Who Did was you with forget you? that? Who was with you when he was with Pam? Probably her dad. Okay. So at, so at no point were you alone? Nah. It was either you and Mr. Jacoby or you and Pam's dad. Or me and Pam and her dad. Okay. All night. Pam never stayed home. Pam didn't stay. No. Pam and you didn't, didn't go out by home. yourself in the woods. Between no. form, ask and answer. We went over this earlier today. Did you go out in the woods by yourself between 2 and 6 o'clock? No. Have you ever told anybody you did? No. fourth bullet point. Is it hard to accept the truth? No, sir. 
It's not. You don't need to interact with them like that, sir. All right. Anything else you want to tell me? Nope. You sure? Positive. This is your chance. I'm out of here. Sign fourth bullet point, scientific evidence. Some of the nation's leading forensic experts stating the wounds on the victim's bodies were caused by animals at the crime scene, not by knives used by the perpetrators. That was part of the filings in the court proceeding that you're, you're aware of that, right? From reading the press Object articles? Objectives to form like foundation of personal knowledge. That's your understanding, right? You have to answer out loud. Yeah. I mean, it's not a secret what's in there. We can all read it. It's right there, exactly. right? Exactly. This kind of shoots down the theory that you used a while ago about the knives. You know? Now you got forensics. You mean the knife? You mean Stevie's knife? Yeah. Well, there's a difference between the, vi the wounds being caused by knives and someone taking the knife that was on Stevie's, Stevie's body at the time of the murder and having it in their, uh, in their house after the murder. Objectives to form seems facts, not in evidence. Did you take the knife from Stevie? Years before. Years before. When did he get the knife? I don't remember. You remember how old he was when he got the knife? Years no, before? No. Who gave him the knife? His grandfather? It's possible. Well, that, that kind of gets us to the next bullet point. There were sworn affidavits outlining new evidence by Pam Hobbs about finding the knife Stevie's knife and Terry's, I mean, in your drawer, which had been carried by Stevie at all times. Objectives to form like a foundation. You have an understanding from the press, press articles and, and discussions with folks that that, that that evidence was in the federal court filings as well, wasn't it? Objectives okay. to form like a personal knowledge. Do you have that understanding that that was in there? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, and how did how'd you get that understanding? Reading the papers. Reading the papers. You talk to Pam? Oh, yeah. You talk to Pam, say, Pam, you know, did, did Pam tell you, hey, I found Stevie's knife in your drawer. What the heck were you doing with it? No. You think that's one of the reasons why Pam thinks you killed Stevie? No, Pam don't think that. Pam doesn't think you killed Stevie? No, sir. Pam knows better. Well, you've said, all, you've said many times and quoted many times in the press and it's even in your journal that that Pam and the family think that you killed those three little boys. Yeah, when they're mad, they say anything. When they're not mad, they'll tell you the truth. So it's only when they get mad that they accuse you of triple homicide. Oh, yeah. They'll do anything when they get mad? You have to ask them. You have a temper? Huh? I try not to have. Were you mad when you shot your brother-in-law? No. No? I tried to avoid that. By sitting out on your car with your gun in the back of your, back of your, in the, so, in, in the belt with 350, with, with hollow point bullets? Why'd you have the gun? It's my if gun. If you were trying to avoid it. I had called the police twice. How many guns do you own? None at the present. How many, how many did you own back in 93? Two or three. Well, tell me about them. What kinds? I don't remember. No, do you, do you recall the, the the type, the millimeter? 357. What other kind? 25, 9 millimeter. Okay, you, any other kind of guns? No. What happened to the guns? Probably the Hickses stole them. Do you have the guns now? No. When did you, when did you last recall seeing the guns? Uh, during that time. During the 93 time frame? 94. 93, 94 time frame? You aware that the police found a gun in the Robin, Hill, Robin Hood Hills area? No, I don't care about that. You recall, you recall if it was the same caliber of gun that you just said you had that now you don't know where it is? Mm, no. No? Would that surprise you that they found that a gun with the same? Don't mean nothing to me. Don't mean nothing to you? No, don't Why mean not? Because it ain't my gun. And your gun. Where is, where is your gun? Ask the Hickses. They take I'm, stuff. I'm asking you. Don't you think it's don't you think it's reasonable for a gentleman who carries three guns and has shot at least one person to know where their where, where their firearms are, Mr. Hobbs? No. Did you drop the gun in the woods on the night of one May the fifth? Did you drop the gun two. in the woods on the night of May the fifth? No, I don't. I didn't carry a gun. Did you have a gun with you on the night of May the fifth? 
So, did you drop it in the woods on the morning of May the sixth? Didn't have it with me. Where was it? I don't even think. Yeah, I had a gun back then. But where no, was it? I couldn't tell you. Probably at home. Where'd you keep your guns at home? Huh? In drawers. What drawers? Where? I couldn't tell you. You don't remember where you kept your guns? Huh? One of them in my truck. Is that, is that the 357? Uh, that's one of them. Where'd you keep the other? Where'd you keep the 357 other than in your back pocket? And in my truck. In your truck. So you kept two guns in your truck. And where'd you keep the third one? Probably in the house. Which one did you keep in the house? The nine mil? Probably. I don't remember. Don't remember. When you were out traipsing around West Memphis on the night of May the fifth or May the sixth, did you were you afraid for your safety at all? Nope. Is that because you had a gun? Didn't have one. Didn't have one with you? Did you have knives with you that night? <laughs> no. No? We need to go off the record, sir, because the court report, the videographer needs to change tapes. We're going off record for a tape change at 3.11 p.m.